All right. I think we're live. Hey, guys. I see some folks have already popped on, so that's awesome. I love how it can kind of count down and you can kind of join whenever. But say hey if you've popped on. I can see some folks literally were already here, so that's awesome. Uh, I'm going to kind of go back and see. I don't know if you're still on, folks. Looks like some people were here earlier. Oh, I can hear me on my TV. I guess it's really on. Hold on. Okay, let's see. Um, I can't actually see me on the TV. Can y'all see me? Maybe I don't have my. Um... Can you guys see me? Someone message or someone comment if you can see. I'm not sure. Um, if you can. Let's see. Yes. Tammy says yes. So you can see me. I don't know why it's not showing up on my um, thing up there. But it does say I'm live. I just can't actually see it. Um, maybe I can back out and back back in. Um, back. Okay, you can see in here, Dawn. Okay, Charlotte can see in here. Okay, well, I just can't on here. Let's see. If, you know what? On on my, um, I don't know. If I click it again, maybe. But I'm also just not going to worry about it. Okay, awesome. Well, yay. I'm glad you're here. Thank you all for popping on tonight. Um, I love doing this. Um, oh, now I can see me. Okay, now I feel better. Um, so I know some of you might have come on with some questions. Some people did ask me when I posted that I was going to do this. Um, they posted some questions, so I was going to go over those as well. Um, but hey, everybody, um, Yvette and Brett and Angelina and Allison and Dev, Amanda. Hey, guys, so glad you're here tonight. Um, so let's just hop on. Hope you are doing good. I've got my uh, margarita, so ready to, to drink and chat and um, just see how you guys are doing. I don't know if y'all saw. I did like this really quick five minute live the other day when I was just having one of those days. We're quarantined here in my house. We have to wait to send the kids back to school. And it just, it's a hot mess. And, um, and I just seriously, um, I was having a moment. So it was fun popping on. I actually got more comments on that video than I have on any of my videos in the past couple of months. So thought it was funny. Um, just that, you know, that people were kind of relating to the hot mess that, you know, just the craziness of our world as far as working. Um, Angelina, oh, you have a um, live tonight, too. Um, hey, Alicia, um, we'll have to pop over and see yours as well. But OK, so let's go. I, but again, thank you all for the ones that commented on my um, hot mess day. I just was having a moment and had to get out and. Uh, today went for a really long walk with my family. We went outside and um, oh, you don't. OK. Um, OK, I don't know uh, what I'm reading. Um, the, oh, the, the video by the water. So I do live at the beach, which is amazing. And um, just kind of taking it all in on days that are a little crazy. So, um, OK, so I've got questions that people had, uh, you know, sent to me um, knowing that I was going to go live tonight. And so I thought we would just go through those. You guys, you know, keep chatting on the side. I'll go through these as well. Um, and that way, if you have other questions, we'll, we'll do those. We'll do those, too. So um, the first question I had from Lex, the Lex Life, um, she just got a one needle machine and wants to know all my favorite must haves to start. So this is obviously a question, you know, that we get a lot. Anybody that has been doing embroidery for a while um, in, in the beginning of my embroidery career, I really did feel like um, there was not one place to go. It was like and, and, you know, even to this day, you know, I go here to get this. I go there to get this. Well, you guys, when I think there is a void, I try to fill it. I have created a website called embroideryaid.com and I've linked it in the comment section of this um description of this video here so hopefully you can see it um, even while we're live and I'd love for you to check it out it's still like in the beta version so you can't actually order anything off of it but I would love for you to check it um, and, and just see what you think and, and the idea behind it is it will be a place that you can go to get all the information when you start out new or when you're a seasoned embroiderer, embroiderer 
can never say that word right. And I don't even know when you write in word errors, is it E-R-E-R? -E -R? That just seems weird. But anyway, um, so what you even though you can't purchase anything on there yet, um, I have gotten wholesale accounts with um, two major distributors and um, I am going to be able to offer the products that I consider essential to any embroiderer, embroiderer, see, I can't say it. Um, and so you can actually click on the tools. It's the tools tab will take you to the items that I have deemed to be essential. And uh, again, you can't, you can't quite check out yet. We're, we're getting close. We're getting really close. Um, I've actually ordered the first batch of, um, of items. And once I get them, you know, in house, then I will make the ordering live, but you can still go and look and, and see what, what I consider to be essential supplies. So um, anyway, I think it's awesome. Um, you can also access all of my videos and um, access my podcasts, which are new um, on there as well. You can um, link to all those things. There's also another spot on there and I've done my first three and I have just been giddy and so excited about it, but i um, offering one-on-one -on -one coaching and it really is just an opportunity for you to ask me anything and everything You've got the floor and um, just kind of helping you walk through, you know, questions that you might have. So that is available now. You can actually go access that on the website. Um, so check that out if that's something that interests you. Um, and and it, it would just be a time that would be, be dedicated to you and I just talking through things. Um, potentially could be, you know, Etsy related, small business related, embroidery, obviously. So if that's something that interests you, then certainly would love for you to check that out. Um, what else is on there? Um, but yeah, it's got, you know, the machines that I, you know, recommend as far as the Rakomas, it's got, um, some digitizers that I recommend it, and I'll 100% be adding to that. Um, it has, you know, the stable stabilizers that I recommend, the needles that I recommend. Um, it has, I can't even remember all it has oh, so much, so much. Um, and I hope you'll check it out. Um, I did mention the podcast. Uh, I will be trying to do one a week. And so that's just something. And the reason I have that is I love podcasts. You know, I kind of late to the podcast game, but I really do like them as far as me listening to myself. Um, i kind of late to, you know, finding them out. But when I go for walks, I just absolutely love to, you know, listen and learn. And uh, it's just a place that we can chat. I, I look forward to having um, some other guys such as yourself um that we could um you know just chat and do you know interviews and and talk about how you started your embroidery businesses so uh, if that's something that you'd be interested in i would love for you to look into that um and, and message me if that's something you would like to do um i do have um a Discord, which y'all, I'm not really sure. The, the ladies that have um, welcomed me into the world of Discord, which is a new, well, it's probably not new. Actually, my kids say it's not new, that it's been around, but it's new to me. Um, but I've really enjoyed talking to folks that um, are doing, you know, the same thing as far as, you know, it's Etsy businesses, small businesses, doing embroidery. Um, I think it's awesome. So, um, you know, I, I've created a Discord for myself, even though um, some other ladies have them as well. I have put in the um, comment section or the d description of this um, where you can join my Discord and we can just chat. What I love about it is it's just it's just easy chatting. Um, you know, you can post a message up there and um, and, and you know get a, a quick message back from somebody else that's on there, and we can talk about anything. Set up different little rooms. Also, um, I have. Um, I, I've just started on Clubhouse. Now, have y'all heard of Clubhouse? So uh, it is new, like it is in the beta, you know, mode, a brand new social media platform. And I'm not like the greatest as far as social medias, um, but it's just kind of fun. And I, I like to be in the ground floor of anything. So um, I've put information in the bottom of um, the website that you can go to for, um, for Clubhouse. But I will tell you, um, it's invitation only. So you have to know somebody that's in it. And you know, I get a certain number of invites. And so if it's something that you're interested in, uh, let me know, put your comment here if you would like to join, if you've looked into it and you think it would be something you would like to do. Um, the only way I can add somebody is to, um, I have to get your phone number and you have to be an Apple user only. It's not for Androids yet. So it's an app that you would download um, for Apple users. 
And again, it's in the beta mode, but um, people that are into social media, it is, um, it, it's hot right now. So I always like, like I said, um, joining things, you know, when they're starting and just seeing them grow and if they take off. But the, the clubhouse, all it is literally is talking. That's it. You join a, a room and um, you talk. There's no texting. There's no, there's no video. There's none of that. It's literally just talking. Um, so again, I don't really know what I'm doing yet, but I think it's pretty cool. Um, and I'm creating an embroidery club. Um, so I, I, I think it will be fun. It's just a way we can actually talk um, back and forth in a room. You can pop in, you know, we can set times and, and whatnot. So something new, if you're interested in it, please, you know, leave your name below and I'll message you um, if that's something you would like, because I do get invites, um, a, a limited number of invites, you know, over time. So all right. Those are all my little random things. Hey, guys, I see you guys over here. Um, it looks like Alicia is already answering a question for me. And I appreciate if you guys do see something and can answer. That's awesome. Um, Kathleen's from New Jersey. Um, let's see. We've got Mina from Canada. Carmen, uh, what made you start into the embroidery field? So um, I've told this story before, but it was just the fact that I found this itty bitty embroidery machine, a PE 500 that is a four by four machine. I found it on a buy sell trade page and I just love crafting. So crafting is my thing. And I'm always looking for the next toy. You know, I've got a bin full of things that I've bought that I might do one day. That's just how I am and how I work. Um, so, you know, when I saw it and it was a good deal, I was like, yeah, I'm going to embroider everything, even though I have all boys, I'm going to have my monogram on everything. Well, so I got it. It sat there. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, and, you know, and, but then six months later, I finally, you know, dove in and learned. I posted one item that I made for my niece on my Facebook page. And I got like 10 responses of, oh my gosh, will you make me one? And it just started making my little brain go, hmm, there's, there's something here. There's a need and, and there's a need locally. And so, um, um, Anyway, I'm, I'm looking at um, Jamie's name. I bet your name gets said wrong all the time. <laughs> but hi from North Carolina, that's where I'm at too. Um, but anyway, back to my long, boring story. Um, anyway, the fuel was lit after I made those few items for folks. And it just kind of, I just dove head first in and, and just kept going. And I was a full-time nurse at the time. I was making things for um, folks at work. I was literally bringing, you know, a pink bag every day to work one, two, or three. I was meeting people in the cafeteria of this huge hospital. And I just started to be known as the, you know, nurse that did embroidery. And so that's how the name came about, Embroidery Nurse. I was the nurse that did embroidery at the hospital. So anyway, um, I, that name stuck and I just kind of loved it um, all along because it really kind of described who I was. And um, I just had fun, you know, letting it grow. As, as, as busier as my kids got, I needed to step back a little bit um, in the nursing field. And um, so by stepping back, you know, I went from full time to, to part time to casual to them not needing me when the pandemic started. Um, so um, luckily, I had been growing my business to the point that I was it was my full time job versus um, nursing was kind of my part time. Um, nursing was my side gig. Embroidery is my full time gig. So I'm sure I will go back into nursing at some point. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, but when the pandemic started, um, I um, I stepped back when when they didn't need me. And then when they um, wanted me to come back, uh, we had already hightailed it and moved out of town. So um, I did love the folks that I work with, but um, we decided to pick up and move our family to the beach. Um, yes, it does just start with one, Sue. So, um, let's see. Let me go back up and see a couple of questions that I saw. Can I use... Um, can I use the small embroidery thread spools for my single needle on my multi-needle? Absolutely, yes. There are some colors that are not worthy of a large spool. Um, if you'll see back here, I mean, I've got lots of the little ones. Um, I only get the big ones in the colors that I use all the time. Um, like I said, I, not every color is worthy to be a 500, 5,000, whatever. Um, so absolutely, you can definitely use them without doubt. Um, Let's see. Thank you, Sandy. You answered that for her. Um, okay, let's see. 
I thought I saw. Oh, um, we have what software do you prefer to work with? Like a brilliant so what pro? So in brilliance all the way because it's all I've ever used. I did a lot of research in the beginning about. Uh, and that, that was the other thing. There was not enough information that compared them all. And so I had to do my own research and did a lot of it to figure out which one I needed. Um, and it is so worth it. Oh, my goodness. So, some people are like, I don't want to pay. You know, there's a free. Mm -mm. I mean, y'all, is it? it's $149, I believe, um, right now. And sometimes, it, you know, they'll have a sale, you know, a little bit off that or whatnot. Um, but y'all, for real, it, you need it. Um, I, I, I can't say anything about So What Pro because I've never used it, but I can tell you I love Brilliance. It's all I've ever used. It's all I've ever needed. Um, I actually, um, in a few of my videos, you can actually see me using it. So if that can kind of give you an idea of how it works, you can look up a couple of those that might have Brilliance, you know, in the title. Um, but yeah, I definitely use it and I love it. Um, let's see. Oh, awesome. Shayna said she just uploaded a video tonight using that software on a Mac. Awesome. So, yes, we need to go check that out. Um, I definitely, definitely like that. Um, hey, Cindy. Um, Alicia says the same thing. A brilliance. She'll never use anything else. And honestly, the only reason I won't use anything else is because I've never, I've just never felt the need to look for anything else because it's always done anything that I've needed it to. What I would like to do one day, I think it'd be fun just to play with, do a little bit of digitizing. So I might get the next level, uh, but I have had zero reason to get it. Everything that I need is is right there on there. Dawn says she uses so much pro and love it. You know what, Dawn, if I had started with that and that's all I ever, you know, knew or used, then, um, then, you know, absolutely. Um, I'm sure it's great. I'm not saying anything against it because I don't know anything about it at all other than I use a brilliance. So. Mina asked, does anyone in the group, y'all respond? I don't know. Um, let's see. Do you at first want lots of projects to sell or to do? I'm kind of just want a little direction. Um, not sure I know what that's asking, June. Do you at first want lots of projects to sell or to do? Hmm. Hmm. Ask me again so I might understand how to answer you better. Um, thank you, Alicia. She asked y'all to hit that like button. It does help, I promise. Um, okay, so you have both and you use and Brilliant. So maybe you've, you've learned that that's the one you like better. Oh, uh, and then Cindy is the other way. She has both and she prefers So What Pro. But I do, Cindy, I do recently saw your video and you started with So What Pro. So maybe it's what we learn on. And so for you, I think it was harder to switch to Brilliance because you're so used to So What Pro. Um, so for me, because I started with Brilliance, it's all I know. Um, so may maybe, I don't know, but it's good to know. See, there, there's, there's one out there for everybody. Deb says she's, she's got it, but she hasn't opened it. Open it. You got it. There's so many videos, not you know, that people have made in regards, and, and Brilliance has great videos too about you know learning how to use it. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, let's go to another question. Um, Stephanie wanted to know how much I actually make. Um, so, uh, like I said, I definitely make more than I did as a nurse in my embroidery um, world, but I don't just do. Um, you know, I don't, you know, I, I've kind of diversify myself in different things that I do. So um, it's not just from Etsy. I also sell on Amazon handmade um, and, and do several other things. Um, I, I sell, um, you know, fabric and, and different things like that. And, you know, embroidery aid is going to be another addition to that. Um, but I just think that's such a huge contribution to the embroidery world that I really look forward to it. And, and I'm doing it uh, I, I'm doing it for who I was five years ago, if that makes sense. Um, and, and I think that's always your best customer is someone who you were five years ago. I, I know what you're looking for. I know what your, I know what your questions are. So um, I think that will, um, I, hopefully it will be helpful to, to everyone. Um, let's see. Oh, Dawn says um, she has hatched. I have heard people talk about that and I've seen a few new tutorials that, um, that some folks have been putting out recently from our Discord group. So that's good to know. Um, Joan, okay, sorry for the confusion. It's okay, I get really easily confused. It's, it's me, not you. Uh, before you start on Etsy, how many items? Okay, so I have a good video on you know starting Etsy. 
and uh, in the world of embroidery. And it was recommended, um, you know, you don't want to just have four or five listings. Um, I, so the way I did it, but I kind of do a lot of research um, about anything. And I do um, probably more than it's necessary. Sometimes, you know, I wait for things to be perfect before I uh, will, you know, jump in. But um, so I did a lot of research on Etsy. I, I did a lot of, um, you know, just lessons and, and, and things like that to try to learn. And for me, I wanted to be able to continually put um, listings on Etsy daily until I reached up to like 150. And the way I, you know, tell you to work on that, you might not have 150 products, but what I would start to do is everything that you make from here on out, take a picture of. Every picture that you take will become a listing when you're ready to list them. So, um, you know, go ahead. If I was, if, if I was me a few years ago, I would say, go ahead and just open it, start the process of, you know, getting, you know, everything down from, you know, orders, organization, um, you know, shipping, you know, get all those things ready. Um, and, and when you feel 75% there, you're probably as ready as you'll ever be. So good luck. If you have specific questions, let me know um, about that. Um, where were we up here? Um, um, story time with Cece. That sounds fun. Do you read? I want to read with you. Um, how do you decide what to make that sells? So um, you sometimes don't know when I, the first year I, I started listing um, in October, um, several years ago, and who knew that the thing that was gonna be the most popular item that year was aprons? What? Out of everything in my shop, that was my top seller. So sometimes you don't know. And I do have a Facebook group and I will do interest posts um, often in there. Like I'll see something I'm like, that is absolutely the cutest thing in the world. And I'll put it in my group and say, do you guys have any interest in this? What do you think? And um, <laughs> um, sometimes when I think it's like the cutest thing in the world, I will get zero comments. And I'm like, oh, well, I thought it was cute. Um, and then other times I'll put something on there and I'll get 250 responses like, oh my gosh, I got to have them. Let me know when you have it in. So, you know, kind of bouncing things off others, knowing who you sell to, who is your target market, who, who are, you know, my target market is Susie. Susie has uh, extra money. Um, she's, you know, uh, able to, you know, buy her kids something for every season. And she loves to have that picture on Facebook of her kids. And, and she loves to every year have the exact same photo in the album um, with the same pajamas with the monogram at grandma's house. I know who she is. So I look for things that I think she'll like. So you'll know that Susie's not you know, real, right? Um, she's, she's an avatar. Have you read about that? Um, you, you want to know who your avatar is, who you're selling to. So, um, you know, maybe you're selling, you know, something that's completely different than, you know, who I'm selling to. And, and that can be the case in the embroidery world. You might be selling, um, you know, uh, kitchen napkins that are for, you know, the wedding field. So, you know, you might be selling to, to Sally. Wait, did I say Sally? You might be selling to Tina and Tina uh, wants the greatest wedding in the world. And she's inviting, you know, 30,000 people to it. And she wants her monogram on everything that she has. So you got to figure that out. Um, and once you kind of figure that out, you, you can kind of learn, um, you know, what would sell to your to your folk. Um, OK, let's see. Um I can't read some people's names. How to do inventory and stuff for taxes? Like we end up hoarding so much fabric, t-shirts, but uh, not so much. So Paper and Sparks, you guys, you've got to look into this. She has made the most amazing spreadsheets um, that can, and, and they are specifically, she has a specific uh, ones for Etsy sellers, for e-commerce sellers. Um, it really does help you keep up with your inventory, helps you, you know, get ready for tax season long before it's, you know, time to be getting ready for it. So I highly recommend looking into that. She's got really good inventory um, sheets and whatnot. So that, that's my recommendation to, to look at that. I'm not really that good with it. Um, Dawn says I got my second multi-needle and is a learning curve using both at the same time. Absolutely, right? So when I got two, I thought, well, this is going to double my, um, you know, output. And in one sense it does, but you have to be so 
organized to make it work. So on one, I would try to do just monograms. And on the other, I'll do like the applique shirts. So that one, actually both are always running. I want them to always run. I, I start getting anxious when I've got, you know, a hundred orders to do and they're both not going. I, it's like, oh my gosh, why do I have this extra machine? And now that I have three, whew, I try to batch things so that, um, you know, one machine might have something that does have all the stops that I'm having to cut and the other machine just keeps going. I've got one Valentine shirt right now that is uh, like 28 minutes, but it's it, you just set it and forget it and walk away. So I always have one of those going because it's one of my, you know, top shirts. And then on the other one, I'll have one of my Valentine shirts right now that is an applique where I've got to go out and, you know, cut my little dinosaur, cut all the little hearts. So that really does, you know, you know, is game changer. And, and Dawn, the second thing is you're going to have to get double of all of your supplies. Um, I realized in the beginning, I didn't have two Durky hoops and dark Durky is what I use. I know I need to get in my hoop. You guys have convinced me that that's what I need. I'm watching all you guys, but um, Durky has been my go-to hoop for shirts and I only had one. So I realized when I got my second machine, well, I'm like waiting for that machine to finish so I can get on this machine. And that was annoying. I also had to buy two arms for my fast frames. So instead of, I didn't have to buy the entire set of fast frames again, but I did need two arms. So one arm could be on each and I could, you know, move them back and forth. That way I wasn't having to wait. Also, when it came to my, you know, the colors, I needed thread in every single color double because I don't want to be waiting for the white to be finished on that one item so I can do the shirt on this item. Things like that were really slowing me down. So you really do have to get double supplies um, when you double your machines. I mean, a lot of it you can use, but um, that helped help me. All right, let's see, but congratulations, that's awesome. All right, where are we at up here? Do, 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 do. Phyllis, I don't know how much Amazon charges me. I really don't, isn't that awful? I should know the statistics on that. I don't really like Amazon that much, but I mean, I, I have, you know, some things on there. Um, for me, it's not user-friendly. Y'all look what I bought. I think I saw somebody with something like this. It's all 64 ounces in here. Let me press this. Boom! How cool. <laughs> I laughed when it came. I'm like, that's huge, but how nice. Okay. Um, Whitney Way, or Whitfield. Sorry, Whitfield Way. Uh, I opened up an Etsy shop, but I don't know how to tag. I have a lot of designs, but only uploaded two. What should I do? Um, so there's some really cool SEO classes and there's one that's coming up that has been recommended to me and I'm on it. I think it starts in just a couple of days. I will put that at some point somewhere um, in the comments or in the description of this. So come back later because it's not in there now. Um, but it, it's an, it, I'll link it. It's an Etsy course and it is a four day intensive I've heard it's amazing learning about SEO because I'm not the greatest, but in a tag, you want it to be what people are typing into Etsy. So if you go up into that search bar and you're looking for something, that's what you need your tag to be. So if someone goes on Etsy and wants, you know, a purple dress, you need to make sure a purple dress is up there or a birthday shirt. You need to make sure that's in there. Um, you really have to be specific to what people are looking for when it's mother's day and you have an item that could work for a mother, put that in your tag when it's a, upcoming holiday and it's something that happens to have red in it well put valentine's day in the tag what people are searching for is what your tag should be okay let's see um you asked about children's product safety compliance for the items for kids i don't make the items from beginning to end i only in, in embellish on them so it's, it's different rules uh, when it comes to compliance for that. Um, I did have from one company, um, Bayou Blanks, where I used to buy um, pajamas from. They got in huge trouble um, one year um, when things went through customs that their pajamas, they were loose fitting and they were awesome. They were so comfortable. And I think that's why people loved them. Um, but it was deemed that they were not compliant for um, pajamas. And that year was awful for all of us that sold them. Um, but, you know, what they ended up doing is if we would um, be refunded and repurchase them with a name that said children's, you know, something versus pajamas. I don't know. It, it was a hot mess, but it is something that you have to be aware of. Um, but since I don't make them, I don't know all the uh, the knowledge that you're probably looking for. But there are some really good Facebook groups 
that are specific to compliance um, that you can certainly probably get more information from. <clears throat> hi, Anna. Hi, Dolly. Hi, Ashley. Um, let's see. She actually started with Sew It Pro and now has some brilliance as well. And she uses one for BX fonts and digitizing, but I feel like I can edit and manipulate purchase designs more on so, so that's good to know. Yeah, BX fonts, couldn't imagine not doing them. Um, KPE says, I have Hatch. I think it's easier to digitize, but not on the editing side. I think I'm used to in brilliance. So yeah, there really are a bunch. Um, Sue, I'm calling you Sue because it's in your name. I hope that's okay. Um, have you ever done craft shows? And if so, have you had success? So I've done several different types and success with some and not others. So I've kind of had to learn um, what to look for. So when I talk about my avatar or the person that I am selling to, I need to think about where she goes. She doesn't go to a um, flea market. That's not where she's gonna be. Um, she is going to be at a Christmas extravaganza um, that is, you know, you have to buy a ticket for and you get wine at the door and you shop all night with no strollers. Like that's where she's going and that's where I need to be. She is not going to be at the flea market. So me taking, you know, my dresses that, you know, have monogram tabs and, and, you know, cute little sweaters and, and items like that. Um, I've had to learn where to go. I had the most success at a craft show, which really was a um, more like a Christmas extravaganza. Um, I literally paid $2,200 to enter it. I was so nervous, but I had been to this many years as, as a um, buyer and, or just a, you know, something fun to do. I would go with my mom and go with my friends. Um, we make a day out of it. And, um, and I knew that's where folks were that would buy the things that I sell uh, because a lot of them already bought for me. They were already in, you know, my Facebook group and in, in, in the neighborhood in, in my town. Um, so that's really important. You really need to look, I highly recommend to, you know, if it's a yearly event, you know, the first year I went to a bunch and just kind of looked around, you know, tried to see who was there, what was already there. Are there already 15 other people that do what I do? They try to limit that some places, but some places they don't care. They just want, you know, vendors. So you want to look and see, you know, would I stand out? At that show that I did, you guys, I mean, I made upwards of $10,000 at this show, but I was the only person there that did monogramming and I was doing it on the spot. Four days. It was crazy. It was crazy. Uh, it was, it was crazy. And I wasn't prepared. I didn't realize how well I would do. So I didn't prepare probably as well as I could. Well, guess what? I was entered into it last year. It was a it's a jury uh, event too, so they look and see what you can do and 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 where they think um, you would fit in with their um, spots. But anyway, I had like four that I was that was very similar that had been recommended to me um, to do up and down, um, you know, in the area that I you know within an hour or two of where I live. And then this year everything was closed. So um, when you talk about diversifying things that you do and where you sell. Um, this year, people that only rely on craft shows, like it was, it was hard. Everything, every single show was was canceled, and most of them did a really good job of canceling well in advance. So um, I didn't bring in a lot of inventory that uh, I had purchased in, in you know the year before to take to the show. So I was thankful for that um, that I wasn't stuck with a lot of Christmas inventory that you know would have sold. So it just kind of depends. Is it bad? Is it? bad to have too much of a niche market. I don't think so. Um, you know, as long as you know who you're selling for and what she's looking for, um, you can build off of that. And, you know, if it's not working, maybe you do need to expand out a little bit. But I, I think niches work better than, you know, broad. Sandy, do you think you should have multiple Etsy stores for different types of things you're selling? For example, I make custom aprons, pillows, curtains, house type items, and I can make baby items. Now, if all of those things are handmade by you, if you're monogramming and, and, and bordering on all those, I say that's the same market and it's not a different store. When when people talk about, you know, you know, having different stores, I would have a different store for, you know, I sell all kinds of things. I, I mean, I sell, you know, accessories for, you know, women versus, and I sell linens. I sell, um, you know, those fancy monogram napkins. I sell lots of children's clothes. I sell appliques. I sell, I'm trying to look my room. What do I sell? 
Um, I sell things, um, you know, for mask and for mask bags and for cleaning and stuff like that. So I sell anything, but it's all embroidered. To, so that is all what, you know, brings it together as the same. Um, if you were to throw in uh, all of a sudden you started selling, um, oh, I can't think of anything random. What's something random that would be, need a new store? I mean, if you all of a sudden, I don't know, I was going to say like crocheting, maybe that would need a new store because that's a whole different, you know, group. If your if your target you know market avatar person changes, then maybe. Um, but you know, I, I actually bought the first thing from a digitizer that um, she does you know beautiful fonts and things like that. Well, I found her because she had one one thing in her shop for big sister little sister, and I bought that. And then I was like, oh my goodness, look at all this other cute stuff that she does. And so I wouldn't have found her if I hadn't, you know, if she hadn't had that one item that was a little bit different than everything she did. So it just depends. I mean, if it's crazy different than maybe, but I can't imagine running two different shops. That would be confusing to me. Um, Heather, yes, I definitely started with a single needle machine. I got her down there. I'd lift her up, but, but I'm not. Um, it, it was a PE 500. So now what are they at? PE 800s? Um, it was a four by four machine and literally once I opened that little puppy up and learned how to use it, um, I, I, um, I w was off and running with, um, you know, the, the second that I realized I was in over my head with the first couple of things that I put out there to sell, um, I quickly went and, and, and jumped up to the next size machine. So, um, you know, I moved up with each machine to the next size when I realized I w was in over my head with what I had. Um, so I didn't just, you know, willy nilly go buy another one because it was fun. It was, oh, my goodness, I need this. I need this now. Like when I bought my first six needle, um, he, he, uh, the, the owner of the shop just laughed at me because I literally went home and I was off and running. Like he showed me a little bit how to do it, kind of knew what I was doing, just figured it out. Couldn't tell you all the different you know, details of the machine, but I knew what I needed to know to get my orders that were sitting there waiting to go. And uh, I came back and I guess, the, I guess it came with like 12 bobbins. And I think I came back the next weekend and I was like, I need more bobbins. And he was like, are you sure it came, you know, it did come with some. And I'm like, yeah, these are gone. Like, I need more. I need, I need like a, do you have a big box? And he laughed. He was like, oh my goodness. But I'm pretty sure he always would say I, I, I met the record for stitch counts on my machines. Um, how quickly I was able to just kind of keep them moving. Um, Angela says, are you still really happy with your coma? Yes, it has been a learning curve, but I absolutely, once I figure, figured her out, Stella, that's her name now, um, I really am. The, the, the different things that I can do that I didn't feel like I could do as easily on my other two machines are awesome. The, um, the size that I can actually, you know, monogram is crazy. Uh, I'm going to do a video soon of a um, shower curtain that I'm like monogramming like this big, which I could not have done on my other machines. Um, so I do like that. I mean, I, it definitely has been a good addition. Um, I'm glad that it's, you know, that I have it with my other machines so that I can kind of use them all doing different things. Um, so that, that's been nice. And when I've had questions, you know, I've, I've been a very appreciative that I can call a phone number and say, this is what's going on. Can you walk me through it? I actually did a um, FaceTime with one of the uh, representatives last week because, you know, what I was saying, maybe they weren't understanding. So they were like, can we just FaceTime you? I'm like, sure, that would be so much easier for me too to show you what it's doing. Um, and we were able to, you know, fix it by just kind of tweaking something on the um, machine. So, yeah, I love that. Um, yes, Alicia, I need the mighty hoop. I know, I just need to do it. I need to do it. I hate spending money, kind of. No, I really like spending money. I'm just trying to be really smart with what I spend money on. Um, with multiple machines, you need to install a separate electrical. I don't think so. I have not, so I hope not. <laughs> Um, Yvette says, I just got my first machine. What are the files called I need for embroidery? Uh, it would completely depend on what machine that you've gotten um, and, and what um, what they read. So my two baby locks read uh, PES files and my um, Recoma machine reads DST files. Um, so you need to look for that. Um, I guess I'd have to know, you know, what your what, what they read. Um, Dawn, can you repeat the name? Paper and Sparks. I don't know why I just said it real slow as if you couldn't hear me, but Paper 
and sparks. So like paper and then like sparks, woo woo. Um, check it out, amazing. All right, let's see. Um, <laughs> did I put a user in timeout? If I did, sorry, I don't know. <laughs> what is it doing? Okay, um, can you tell me if I can use my Cricut design with Embrilliance or is it just the VX fonts? I don't know. Can someone um, help answer that question? Um, I don't know anything about Cricut. I've never done it. It's another toy I want. So I want, I, I actually want the silhouette and I want a heat press um, and I would like to get a sublimation printer and I would like to get an etching machine and I would like to get a laser machine. Um, so I just don't know what next, right? I really don't have time for any of that, but I want it all. Like I, like I said, I've got some random toys. Let's look at, let's look at my random toys. I got little toys. So not toys, just random things. Like I have a glue gun. I, I don't use glue guns. Bad reels, got a whole bag of them. And even the bags, once I make the bad reel to put it in. I actually do have the bad reel maker. Like the thing that you, you press and, and you make it. Got it. Don't make them. I did make them when I worked. I made them for my um my nurse friends, but I never sold them. Um, I've got a cam snap and all the pretty snaps. Never used it. I want to. I got these pliers and for key fobs. Never made them. Never. I've got a sidewinder where you can wind your own bobbins. Never used but I got it. Let's see. What else do I have in here? Buttons. What are buttons? I don't know. Glue for my glue gun. Never use. I mean, seriously. Oh, 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 oh. I was going to make barrettes. I was going to make them. Like, why buy them when I can make them? You guys, do y'all have this, like, crafting problem like I do? I think I can make everything. I do. I literally, I see something like... I can make that. But I, I mean, really, I can't. But I think I can. It's, 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 a, it's a problem. I was going to make my own barrettes. I even researched with my group which kind of barrettes your girls like. Because I got boys. What else is in here? Yeah, more barrettes. Never made one. Y'all, this box. I'm going to put it up because it makes me sad. Oh, it doesn't really make me sad. But it's like, come on, Kelly. Let somebody else make you barrettes. I've got some brats up there. I didn't make them. They're too inexpensive to make. So, sorry, I can't answer that. I'm sorry, but I'm going to spiel. Okay. So, I, my focus is just on all things custom. I think that's awesome. I don't think you need... I see bows. Are you having luck selling bows? No, but aren't they pretty? I don't sell them. I was trying to find space for that really pretty little section there. Um, so what I actually do is I started this with my group a long time ago. I, um, I buy these very inexpensively. And when I do a shirt, I put one in it. I put one in the back of the bag. Um, you know, and it, it was like, well, maybe people don't like these, but when I, when I stopped doing it, everybody's like, Where, what happened? We love the bows. And I would see pictures that they would post of their, you know, daughter wearing a shirt and they would have the bow in. I'm like, Oh, look, they do love it. So I don't actually sell them individually. Um, again, I thought I was going to make them. I thought I was going to actually make them, hand make them, and I was going to monogram them, but I don't do that. Um, Allison says, I um, want to see how you photograph your products. Okay. Um, I did actually in a video that I'm going to post tomorrow, my Monogram Monday video, uh, I did kind of do a little snippet on on how I was, um, I did it from creation to packaging of, of a shirt, um, polo shirt. But um, I will do a video exclusively to that. What I realized last night when I was recording is that I record on the same thing I take my pictures with all on my phone. So um, uh, anyway. Um, Simply Jewel, for someone who only has a four by four machine and wants to sell, what would be your product suggestion? Monograms. Um, you can do, you know, a three and a half, three three and a half inch monogram on anything. Uh, so what I started with, and I, again, I started with a four by four. I used, I had these, I'm gonna sneeze. If I say that, sometimes I don't do it. I'm gonna do it. Maybe not. Um, I had these cute little dresses and I'm gonna sneeze. This is really annoying. Maybe if I drink water, it'll go away. Maybe margarita. 
I mean, seriously, how fun is that? And how stupid do I look drinking that? <laughs> Um, okay. Anyway, um, so you can put monograms on things. You don't have to do huge appliques because you won't you won't be happy with it. The app, well, maybe you will. I shouldn't say that. Uh, maybe you'd love it. But when I did a few appliques with my four by four for my son, I was like, oh, ain't that sweet and tiny? Like, no, <laughs> too small for me. But um, there are some cute little appliques you could add on to, like at the bottom of a dress, and put a monogram at the top. You could do that. Um, but the big, you know, like birthday appliques, um, those would be hard to do. I feel like I look really shiny. Um, so you, you definitely can. And again, that's how I started. So the first two things that I bought that really just blew my business up. And if I hadn't done this, I would not be where I was today. I joined a buy-in group. Uh, who's done buy-in group? Raise your hand. Oh, wait, I can't see you. But um, in this buy-in group, they were they were selling. Uh, a buy-in group is a group that you can join. Um, Facebook has a bunch of them. And um, the idea is there's an owner. And the owner will post things that, that are the buy-ins that they're currently running. And anybody in the group can um, buy as many as they need for their shop with the hopes that they get to the minimum order quantity. So a lot of items, when they are being purchased, um, from overseas have a minimum order quantity of 100 or more. And for some shops, you, they cannot afford to buy 100 of one item. They might only need 10 of one item that they could sell within their group. So that person will, you know, go in and say, I need 10. And another shop will say, you know, I need four. Another shop will say, you know, I need 15. And if they can collectively, you know, have 100 um, then the owner of that buy-in will go ahead and purchase it, send out separate invoices, and when it comes, she'll disperse those items to each person. Well, in the beginning, I joined this buy-in group. Now, this this group ended up being an absolute flop, and it was it was a really bad situation um, for this. Uh, and it just you have to be careful and really do your research and make sure you get recommendations and um, you know on good ones. Um, but anyway. She was she had a buy in for seersucker dresses and a buy in for seersucker bathing suits. And I knew that my group was going to love them. And so uh, I think she was um, putting them up for ten dollars. I didn't know anything about anything about anything at that time, except I knew people were going to like these. So I wanted to, to get them. So I posted them in my newly formed group actually in my local buy, sell, trade group that was uh, really kind of popular in my area because um, they were new. And I put them up for $18. Well, looking back, what a joke. I mean, seriously, $18, Kelly, those things were worth so much more than that. But you guys, because I did that low price unknowingly to myself, how silly it was, um, I sold 75 dresses and like 150 um the bathing suits like I could have I could have met the minimum order, order quantity myself and because I didn't really know what I was doing this is all on my four by four machine mind you because I didn't really know what I was doing I was scared I was scared that I had all these people that were ordering from me so I bought two of every single order so if someone ordered a 4T pink bathing suit I bought two 4T pink bathing suits because I was so scared that I was going to mess up on the first one and I wanted to have a backup for everything that I did so even though I had 75 dresses I ordered 150 just in case I was scared so I lost money out the wazoo on that but I grew a business off of that it that is when I realized with those orders alone that my 4 by 4 I needed to, I already had too many orders for that 4 by 4 even though I used it for those orders uh, it, it was it was known to me at that moment that I, I need something a little bit bigger um, that I can, you know, maybe run them both. And, and, and I jumped up to the next one and I got a floor, a baby lot flourish two next. Um, I kind of bypassed the five by seven and moved all the way up to the six by ten. I think that was the maximum size on that. Um, but anyway, those items easily were monogrammed on a four by four because it was a, a, a small children's, you know, bathing suit. And um, they were steer sucker, which I love. Your sucker is my thing. Um, but anyway, easy, easy, easy peasy for you to do. So um, definitely, I mean, just look, I would just probably would say, you know, again, you could do a dress where in the you know bottom right hand corner has like a little applique, say it's for Valentine's, you put a heart on it. You could do that on a four by four, but an applique shirt, um, it to me, it just looks a little too small. That's just me though. You could do um, logos on like polo shirts, things like that. You could definitely do. Um, 
Alyssa Creations with Armor says, what's a good thread to use for embroidery? So there's several, Floriani is my go-to because that's what I started with. Um, I also like Isocord. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Um, and I also like, um, what else have I used? Um, Isocord, Floriani. Um, I have some Madeira. And um, I can't think of the other name. It's like something in Antoine, I don't know, R and A, I don't know. Anyway, so um, those are the those are my main. So Isocord and Floriani are my main two that are my two go-tos. Um, I just I just like the, the Floriani, the sheen of a Floriani um, is just like no other. Um, also, my lady started with single needle. But most everybody does, right? I mean, it's if you can learn how to master a single needle, then you, but w- once you get a multi-needle, you'll just be off and running. Okay, let's go back up here. I'm getting behind. Hope you guys are still here. Um, you had three stores. So you have one Etsy. You have three stores, like three brick and mortar stores. And I couldn't keep up, so I only have one Etsy. Girl, you're busy. That's awesome. But yeah, I only have one Etsy. Okay, Paper and Sparks. Thank you for writing that, Alicia. Uh, have you used them? Or are you just repeating what I said? Um, yes, Ashley, you don't have one either. We need to get them. Let's get them and we'll do a video on them. We'll do a joint video on um, newbies to the Mighty Hoop. Hey, Jay Wilson. My uh, maiden name is Wilson. Hey, Mary. Um, Brett says, um, can I embroider on a cubicle storage container with a multi? Absolutely. Why not? Absolutely. And if it's like mine, like the things that I just showed you, they actually flatten. Um, Let's see one that might be empty. Um, You can really manipulate them. So if if this is what you're talking about, um, you can really manipulate it. You can kind of uh, if you pull up that inner in inside, you can move it around. So it's it's a little more flexible than some, but you absolutely could do that. Uh, some things you can, you have to kind of hold on to. You can't you have to um, you can't walk away from. So uh, you'll learn <laughs> different things that you try. Um, I still don't know if you guys um, you know two weeks ago when I came on. I'm going to do this every two weeks, just so you know, nine o'clock every two weeks. Um, but. I talked about how Rakoma has an article about the 101 things to embroider. And I just want to do that challenge. I, I'm making it a challenge. It's not their challenge. I want to make it a challenge to actually go and literally embroider all 101 things on that list. And there are some wacky things on that list. So you guys let me know if y'all want to be in. If you, what I was thinking in my Discord group, I could make a section for that. And we could kind of go one by one um, and try to knock them out. Because I just think it'd be fun. I want to be like, well, I embroidered on that. Like, yeah. Put on anything. Um, Cricut uses SVG files, and they have to be digitized into border files. Thank you, Sandy. I do know that, right? I knew that, right? I knew that. But what is cool? There's a lot of digitizers these days that actually do sell both. Um, so I think when SVG SVG files, um, there's definitely a lot that do both. So um, that's nice. Um. Oh, good. So Shana was answering too. Yeah, you guys, if y'all can answer a question, please, please, please do. Uh, Cece says, with that list, happy birthday soon. Um, yeah, so what I do is I invest back into my business. And um, I, I don't think, other than my sewing machine that my parents got me when I was younger, um, these are all my toys. Now, I will talk it through my husband, but I don't really ever wait for the answer. I just kind of go for it. I'm just kidding. I do talk it over with, I'm no, I'm not, I'm not kidding. I just buy it. Um, and it says she wants them all, right? I want them all. And I want them to be pink. So I only want a pink heat press. I only want a pink silhouette. Um, I don't know why, but I want it to be pink and cute. Don't even care. <laughs> no, I do care how it works. I do. Um, See, we all have that problem, right? Um, Sue says she can relate. She can so relate. Um, 
I bet you are talking about all the things that I bought, right? Uh, or you want every gadget. Yeah, I, I, it, not that I, I, I need them. I need them. Um, <laughs> Renee says, do I have a bedazzler? No, but I do have a hair crimper. I don't know why I bought that. I have a hair crimper. I think I did it once for Halloween, but I didn't buy it for Halloween. I bought it so I could like crimp my hair like way after the style was cool. Um, Destiny says, oh, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Uh, what are your favorite adult shirt brands and about how much do you pay for each shirt? Jiffy.com, uh, very inexpensive. Um, that's where I've gotten, and they have 10 million types. It's overwhelming. It's just actually, it's like beyond overwhelming, um, which ones to buy on there. Gildan is a good brand. Um, I don't do many um, shirts for adults. I want to, you know, I, I do what kind of want to branch off. No, no I don't want to branch. I don't want to branch. I want to be on the same tree. Um, I do want to add that, I guess is what I should say, but um, is that eye bigger than the other? Um, it looks like it. Um, but anyway, that's all I can say. I have, I've had people reach out that will see like a kid's design that I do an applique and be like, oh, I, can I get this an adult? And I always try to, you know, say, of course, I mean, I can do it. Yeah. Um, and anytime that's happened, I've gotten it from jiffy.com and they're super quick to, to send. Um, oh, I make you laugh. Well, I just feel like, why not? Right. Um, <laughs> you say you hide your addiction. Well, no one really knows about it. Just the 126 of you that are watching right now. Um, and maybe my husband and my boys, but I hide it from everybody else really well. <laughs> my friends don't know what I do. I mean, they do what I do, but they are not my avatar. I do not sell to them. A couple of them. Um, Let's see. I have a teacher that says, sure, you can make it yourself, but you won't. <laughs> I know I've heard people at craft shows that get so annoyed when someone will walk up and they'll like see someone take a picture because they know what they're doing. They're taking that picture like I can make that. I just do it like, hey, look, look at that over there. Click. Yeah, that's so cool. I'm just kidding. Have you all learned about this? I, I don't know who, who taught me this, but. I do lots of, I take, do y'all not take pictures of everything uh, that you see online? I'm like, I'm going to make that. Um, or it might be a font that you see, or it could be, you know, a new applique that you see. And um, you can actually on your iPhone, you can um, do it where you double tap. You can set it where if you double tap, I can't see it on the Apple. It takes a picture and, and screenshots it. So I take even more screenshots instead of, you know, pressing all the, the two buttons at the same time. I mean, not that it really saves you all, but like half of a millisecond of a second. But anyway, you can set it to where it takes a picture. Isn't that cool? Um, so anyway, where are we going? Um, my husband tells me my craft stuff grows any bigger. I have to buy my own house, right? Well, we did buy a house and this room that I'm in was made for me. And it just, it, it was, um, I'm glad that other people have things that they don't use that they own, uh, one day, right? One day, one day. Um, you're my new embroidery group person. Oh, thanks. Well, ask me any questions if you have it. Seriously, you guys, I love it. I have these other questions that I'm going to answer. Um, yes, Mary, you can definitely do towels with a four by four because it's a monogram. So anything that's just solely a monogram, you can definitely do with that. Um, I love you. You all are saying you have all the random supplies too. <laughs> it's not just me. Um, where, where are we at? Okay, let's see. I'm still trying to go through the comments and I am 10 minutes behind. Um, Heather says she found out some of the buy-ins require you to already have a website up. Um, I, none of the ones that I'm in um, have needed that. Um, I did get to a point where I, I can buy the entire minimal order quantity. So it, it was not advantageous. It's a good word. It was not I really like that word. Let's say it again. It was not advantageous. It was not advantageousness. Anyway, for me to be in the groups, um, but I, I still have um, garnered some relationships with um, folks that do those. Um, and, you know, from time to time, if I'm looking for something, then I'll reach back out. Um, and, and there are times where I'll get something like, oh, yeah, I'd like 10 of those. Maybe get it for, um, you know, to, to pop up for a, a special sale on my site or whatnot. <laughs> You said that when you sneeze, look towards the light. Well, I got this big old light right here. So maybe it prevented me because I didn't sneeze. Come in. 
You going night night? Well, come here. In a minute. You want to say hi? Oh, you just ran into my table. Look, you can see you there. This is Thomas. Oh, and he's getting big. Can you say hi? Hi. Can you wave and not be silly? Thomas is getting ready to go to bed. Oh, wait. It's not 10. It's not 10. It's not 10, is it? No. Yes, you do. It's not 10. He's not still up. I love you. Good night. I will come up. I Go back under here. Cookies. I got four cookies. You got four cookies? Oh my goodness. All right, love you. Um, so no, it's not 10. He's not up at 10. We go to bed early here. Love you. Come I will. Go under here. Thomas, come on. Go under this. Josh. All right. Thomas. So Robinson, yes. So Robinson Anton, that's the one I was talking about. I knew it was an R and an A. Um, that is another good one that I've tried. Oh, good. Y'all all said that. Um, let's see. Oh, clicked on something I shouldn't click on. Isocord. Yeah, Allison. So I think Isocord is probably what I'm going to sell on embroidery aid um, because they have just been really awesome as far as reaching out. Um, you know, wanting to be included on that. Um, even the Floriani is my love. They're, they're hard to get in with. Um, did you, Angela asked if I found certain threads work better on the Rakoma. So the only thing I've used is Floriani, Isocord, and Madeira. Um, and all of those work just the same to me. Um, I haven't noticed that. Now, I did in the beginning of my embroidery career um, use some that I had bought off Amazon that I just, you know, was like, oh gosh, you can buy all of these in the spin out box. And they were awful. My machine hated them. But what's funny is my next machine, when I went to use them again, didn't care. So it's like some machines just have like minds of their own and they'll use some that others might not like. So try them out, um, you know, see if, if one works better. Um, okay, Angel, you said you've noticed that some work better. I mean, and it, it is funny. I really do feel like it's machines have like the mind of their own and so, some, some machines do okay. And some machines, um, you know, hate certain ones. Um, when I've had to like in a pinch go to like Hobby Lobby or Joann's and get there, um, you know, for something that I just completely ran out of, I, I haven't done that in a long time. But, you know, when I when I wasn't as organized as I try to be now, um, whew, those were awful. They were so thready, so grainy. You know, it would it would just completely like get on the needle and, and get all stuck and break. And ugh, I hated those. So what I do now is um, see if I have it. Yeah. I have um, on my thread chart that I provide, I'll show it to you real quick. Um, I had someone make a thread chart on Etsy for me. And the maximum number of threads that could actually go on this were like 64. And so what I did, spent a lot of time figuring out my top 64 threads. And, you know, in any application of what I might need, you know, I made sure there was one of every color. There was, you know, every color... Can you see my eyes down there? I'm trying to make sure it doesn't see. Um, you know, so there's pinks and blues and greens and any color. There's gold, there's silver, there's um, platinum, there's whites and blacks and just 64 of my top colors. So I make sure that I ha at all times have all 64 of these colors. Now, do I have more colors than this? Yes. There might be something that you need. I mean, I don't know if y'all have quickly learn in the world of embroidery, there's like 59,000 pinks and it's impossible to match colors. I hate matching colors. I hate matching colors. Um, so these 64, I make sure without doubt I have in stock because these are what I put up on my listings. These 64 colors as options. I've never really had anyone say, well, you don't have such and such. Like there's enough options here. So I've got these little cards and when one's running low, um, so this can't read my writing, but like this says 361. Well, this is Floriani color numbers. When my 361, it, when I'm running low on it, I put it aside so that when I do my next um, order, here's 4352 dark gray. If that's running low, I pull the card from my stack and I do one bulk order at a time. And, and I probably only do it like every two weeks, even every month. I, I don't really have to buy it that often because I try to really keep up with what I need. Um, and what I'm running low on. So I use these cards. It's the way that works for me. And these are my 64 colors. Um, and that's that's worked really well for me. 
I can quickly send this to a customer because I have it saved right here on my phone in my favorites folder. Um, if they're like, well, what colors do you have? Well, I send them this and then I also send them these two things. Um, one's my thread chart and uh, I'm sorry, one's my um, font chart and one's my monogram chart. I have all three of these things saved as fi uh, files on my phone that I can quickly send to somebody uh, when they ask. And it saves so much time having those things in place and having some organization when it comes to my thread. Okay. Um, oh, good. Angela has her Recoma 1010 at the end of the month. I think that's an awesome machine, um, 10 needle machine. Um, it's a great uh, home embroidery you know, machine. I have the 15 needle commercial machine. Um, I think the Recoma 1010 is awesome. If anybody's looking to buy a Recoma or interested in it, I do have a link in the bottom of this video. You can use that link. It will actually provide you a little bit off um, if you do end up deciding it's a good machine for you. Um, so, and you know, they can help you when you go to that link, figure out what might work best for you. Dawn says she loves her Mighty Hoops. Got to get it. Got to get it. Um, so Alicia, you haven't seen Paper and Sparks. Thank you for helping me out. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of people said Robison Anton. Um, Sandy said, do you always use sticky stabilizer in your items? It just depends on what item it is. Um, I certainly use it on bags and things like that, but there are some items that I use tear away instead of the sticky, uh, even though sticky is a tear away, tear away that's not sticky. Um, there's, uh, like, uh, my casserole carrier and my lunch boxes. Those actually have a material that the sticky gets stuck to. And so I've learned just to use tear away with some spray adhesive on those. Um, I don't use sticky stabilizer on any clothing item, except if I'm doing something very small, like a, um, like a doll shirt that, you know, I certainly can't hoop. Um, then I'll, I will put it on there. And I mean, it's only a doll wearing it. Come on. Think she'll be okay. Um, Bernie says, I just ordered my PE 800. That's awesome. I've heard they're like impossible to find right now, which, you know, with the pandemic and people being at home more, people wanting to start, you know, a side business. I've just heard they have been impossible to find. So that's awesome that you just ordered it. Uh, I don't know if you got it on Amazon. That's where I've heard people, you know, have been waiting for like months for it. So you're going to do awesome. You're already ahead of the game. You've already found videos to watch. So do you have any tips for monogram embroidery on seer soaker? <laughs> Shelly, that is like my most favorite fabric in the whole wide world. I use it every day. I love it. So really there's no um, tricks. I, I am going to do a video because people have asked me. Um, the biggest thing is don't iron it. Oh my gosh, don't iron it. Don't iron it. Um, seer soaker has, you know, the, um, the, the tough and it's, it's the, um, what is it? The milk and honey of the South. That's what seersucker, it's milk and honey. It actually, that's, that's what they, um, that's where it derived from. Milk and honey is the words in um, some other language. Um, I can't remember what language I want to say. Iranian. So I'm making this up. Persian. Ha, that's it. Persian word. It actually means sheer shakar. Sheer Shakar. Can you tell I've done some um, history on Seer Sucker? You can come in and say hi and say goodnight. Just don't get just don't get bumped here. Come this way. This is my other son, Trace. And no, it's not 10.09 p.m. and he hasn't gone to bed, but it's a holiday mm -hmm. tomorrow. So we can stay up late. Can you say hi? This is Trace. He's going to bed now. Oh, my gosh. Go, silly goose. Good night. Um. Okay, so Sheer Shakar is where the word Sheer Sucker came from. It's a Persian word, and it literally means the milk and honey. Milk and honey, meaning um, that it, or is it milk and sugar? Oh my gosh, I'm so second guessing myself now. Milk and sugar? Milk and sugar. Anyway, it, it's because it has soft and, and then rough, soft and rough. And it's not really rough, but it, it kind of goes up and down in channels of soft fabric and then bubbles up. So you can't iron it directly because if you do, then you flatten it and it will not pop back up. So um, that's my biggest recommendation is not to do that. A lot of things with seersucker are lined because it is a thin fabric. So you have to make sure that you um, stabilize both the fabric and the liner. You don't want to just, you know, stabilize with sticky um, and it only catches the um, lining because then the seersucker fabric on the top can shift. And that's a big no-no. So uh, it, it can really mess your product up. 
Um, so I'll do a, you know a, a quick little snippet on seersucker, but without doubt, it is my most favorite fabric. Um, it is what I buy in bulk. It is what um, I sell. So I love it. Okay. Let's see. I just got a genome seven needle. I had a couple random thread loops and someone said it maybe from using the Durky easy frames. Did you ever have that issue with them? Uh, so I just have regular fast frames, um, but the same, pretty much same thing as the Durky easy frames. Um, a couple of random thread loops. I mean, anytime you can have a couple of random thread loops and what you need is, this is in my, one of my essential supplies, the snag nabbit. This one's bent, it's supposed to be straight. Can you see that? This snag nabbit has got a rough end here. If I, there you go. It has a rough end. Again, it's supposed to be straight. I've been at best jabbing it through something. Um, the rough end is, so it's got a sharp point, like a needle. If you have something that's poking through or a, a, you know, a loop, you're actually going to poke this through the item. And then that right here, which is the um, jagged area, you pull it through the shirt and it will pull that loop down. Uh, these are amazing. <laughs> Again, it shouldn't be bent. I think all of mine are bent, though. I guess I, I try so hard to get them through things. They're all bent. I've got like four of them over here, and I'm pretty sure they all look the exact same. Ah, there's another bent one because um, I really jam them through everything, and I use these every day. You don't want to take an item and snip it. Oh, my goodness, you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that um, you just pull it through. That way you're not jeopardizing it from unraveling later. Um, so I wouldn't think it would be, you know, based on the jerky frames. Um, sometimes those frames can bounce, my fast frames sometimes, uh, if it's, you know, something, if it's not, you know, adhered on the machine the right way. Um, but I would invest in these. It costs like a dollar, like maybe two, but get a bunch. I like panic when I can't find them. So I'd buy them like a lot of them. I'll have those in my essential supplies too. Um, you, Mighty Hoops, way to go. Yeah, we need it. I know we need it. Um, Trisha says she has Mighty Hoops and never used Fast Frames. Oh, see, it's going to open up some more possibilities of things you can do. You're really going to love it. Um, you really are. I mean, it's a completely different, you know, type of um, add-on. So I think you're going to absolutely love it. Um, and, and I do use it for a lot of products. So I think you'll find it very essential to have. Oh, you just tried to join. It says the link doesn't work. See, again, I don't know what I'm doing. It said on here that you could set it to um, to never expire, or it could expire. Maybe it's just for I'll I'll figure it out and I'll post it again. Um, I don't know enough about it. Maybe you ladies that are like Discord pros could help. Um, well, let me see if I can find it again. So. It is, doo, doo, doo. if I click on, sorry, I'm just going to look real quick while we're here. I click on invite. It says it expired. Well, I mean, maybe it's just a one person. Doesn't really make sense. Um, I'll try to figure it out because you can change the link that you provide to expire after never. Max uses infinity. Um. Maybe I didn't save that. That's that's probably what it is. So I copied it and I'll try to add it. I'll try to add it, um, but I'd love for y'all to join it. So maybe come back in the comment section um, or the, the information tomorrow and I'll, I will, or, or tonight when we're done chatting. Um, and um, I'd love for y'all to join it, just a way for us to chat. So thanks for looking. Okay, let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Oh gosh, I'm 20 minutes behind of comments. Okay, you said you couldn't get my link to work either. I think I think what I did is I changed it to never expire, and then I um, I didn't save it as never. So I'm gonna link copied. Let me see if I can do it right here while we're talking. Um, how boring is this to watch? This is some real like awesome life right here. Um, all right, I'm going to go to that. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna click on this. Um, and we'll click on that. We're going to click on that. And that didn't work. 
all right, we'll, we'll figure it out. But I don't really understand it either. But I have enjoyed getting to know people in there. And, I, you know, if that's the, um, I think that's what's fun about it is just kind of getting to know some other folks. Um, so I can't, I can't fix it while, while I'm on. So I, I will add it in a little bit. Um, come out with your own pink line, right? Can I just have pink everything? Um, I think I do a lot of pink because I have three boys. So it's, it's my time to be pink. And I just kind of run with it. Like the largest pink water bottle in the world. Don't you hate it when people are drinking on videos? I don't know why it makes me want to go, Whoa! Whoa! but I'm going to drink my margarita too. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Yes. You want to do the 101? Let's do it. Let's, let, let's monogram or embroider 101 things. Some of the things scared me when I read them. So you want to warn them about what you're going to do. I warn them after I've done it. Isn't that how it's supposed to work? I'm enjoying your live. How are you shipping your orders out? Do you have a label printer? Yes. I have a Dy Dymo, Dymo label printer. Um, I heard a lot of people that don't like that one are now getting the Rolo. Absolute game changer. If you don't have one, um, you can you you can buy uh, even on Amazon. You can buy um, eight and a half by eleven sheets that um, have two labels on them, and that's a great way to do it. But you're going to use ink out the wazoo. What I love about um, the Dymo, they're thermal printers, so they don't require ink. And that right there, you think it's a lot to invest in getting it. Well, I was spending that much more, at double that in ink over time. So don't think about the initial investment. Think about what you'll save in the long run. And it is so easy just to print out your labels um, for the day and it just and to have it stick right on there. I mean, there was a time where I was printing them on regular paper, cutting them out to taking, you know, the tape and putting them on there. That's an option. And then I was buying the eight and a half by 11 sheets and I was printing out two. Another great option. That was a step up. But again, I was using ink out the wazoo. The Dymo and the Rolo are definitely the way to go, without a doubt. Dawn says she has a pink cover for her silhouette and her sewing machines. Um, that could be an option, but I just want them to be pink. What thread holds up to heat? Would like to make rope trivet. I don't know the answer to that, but I don't know. I'd be making it up if I said. I want, I'm going to do a video on polyester versus rayon. That's the two versions. Um, I know. So I'll learn. I like to learn. Um, Joe says, hopefully one day she can start an Etsy shop. Just do it, Joe. Don't wait. I waited until everything was perfect and you don't need that. Just do it. You need cotton thread for heat. Cotton thread. What about polyester and rayon? Screenshot. Did you do the screenshot where you double tap? Isn't that cool? Um, where? Let me go back up here. All right. Hopefully, I'm not answering your questions way later. Well, I am. How, how late am I now? I don't know where. Oh, here we go. Oh, y'all, we're like 20 minutes behind now. Uh, Mary says she has so many screenshots. So that's probably your same, Jenny. You had lots of them. Um, did you see the pink heat press? I saw it on, yes, I have seen one. It's on my wish list, but honestly, I don't, I don't use the heat press for anything. I want to, but I don't have a need for it yet. Um, I mean, it says you have good energy. Some days, some days, if you see me at my live last time, it was when I was losing it. Um, Ginger, you're sweet. Um, well, I like to answer this question, Shana. So embroidery nurse. So I talked about why my, my name is embroidery nurse. Embroidery nurse came with, I was literally the nurse at the hospital that did embroidery. So that name stuck. It, people were calling me the embroidery nurse before it was even a business name. So my thoughts were, so embroidery nurse is really, uh, it's the name of my Etsy. It's the name of where I create things. And it, it happens to be the name of this channel. When I was thinking about embroidery aid, I wanted it to have a name that meant, I, I think it's so important to have a name that tells you what it is just by looking at it. Um, and so embroidery aid, it is a place to go to for aid in embroidery. And the aid to me was a play on words because um, in the nursing field, 
aides, nurse aides, are like the backbone of the healthcare system. They truly are. They are the ones that help nurses do their jobs. Their job is so crucial and so critical and so important that it's kind of a play on words. So I am the embroidery nurse and this is the embroidery aid. Um, I just thought it was good to differenti differentiate the two, that this is a place where you can go for tips, tricks, and tools of the trade. Um, that's where you can go get aid in your embroidery. I am the embroidery nurse. That sounds like I am the embroidery nurse. I am the embroidery. Anyway, so that's who I am. Embroidery aid is a place I would like you to go and hopefully visit to learn and get aid in your embroidery needs to get the supplies you need to get, you know, the tips and tricks and tools um, that will help you in your embroidery career. Um, Bernie says, what is your first embroidery machine? It is the um, PE 500. I still have it. I don't use it, but I still have it. Can I use embroidery thread on a serger? I need to replace the starter thread. <laughs> so let me tell you, I got a serger because again, everybody, I need, that was my next, like I needed to have it. Um, I didn't really know why I needed it. I just felt like I should have it. Just kind of like all the other fun things that I buy. Um, and so I used it and I used it to like close up some items after I would open them to embroider, but I don't make clothes. So I didn't really need it for that. But when I broke my first needle, um, I never used it again because I didn't know how to change the needle and I didn't know how to thread it. So I cannot help you. I don't know, but I'm sure some of these ladies in here um, can help. Um, I know Amber, who is part of um, the um, Discord group that I'm in, she is awesome with the serger and she would be a go-to and she does actually some cool videos on um, her serger and actually makes clothes. So um, if she's here, I don't know if she is tonight, maybe she can answer, um, but if not, she's, she's a great one to look up for that. Um, let's see, hi Thomas. Mary, see, it's not just me. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. We're not strict with schedules here. We just aren't. Love them. Oh, hi, Thomas. <laughs> I thought someone was on your Thomas. You're talking about Thomas. My sweet Thomas. Yeah, isn't it awesome that he's up at 10? Isn't that awful? It's not awful. Tomorrow's a holiday. Stay up, buddy. Do what you want. And he had four cookies. Did you hear him? Um, Let's see. Oh, you had three stores because I had one for planners, one prints and embroidery. So I decided to just do embroidery gifts and more and combine it all. I think, I mean, that would have been insane. You're busy. You are busy. Have you ever organized your own buying group? I'm so interested in doing this in a very legit way, but I need to pick someone's brain about the ins and outs. So I have helped run one, but not be the sole person, um, really just to kind of, you know, get more people to, to buy in. See, I hate when people drink. So I'm going to go over here. You can't see me. It's my margarita. Um, yeah, so they're hit or miss. Unless you have resources to a great supplier overseas, which that is like gold. It's like the golden nugget that's impossible to find. Um, then starting a buying group would be very hard. I was part of a group that we bought from a company in. Um, Vietnam and they make smocked clothing. I used to sell smocked clothing as well. I didn't embroider these. These were just strictly, you know, selling them as is. And um, so that buy-in group was great um, because we had a supplier that we had used for a while and felt very confident with. Now, just trying to find random suppliers on Alibaba and DHgate is next to impossible. <laughs> It is so hard. Um, there's some good resources on here. The Good Life Warrior is someone I would look into if you are looking to try to find a supplier such as that. Um, she has amazing, amazing videos on um, learning about buying, um, you know, from from Alibaba um, or overseas in general. But it is hard. It is that is the hardest thing, and it, and it's not something that um, we tend to share. We don't share. That's the one thing, like, I mean, I pretty much share anything. I mean, I'll give you the shirt off my back. But when you're talking about suppliers that it's taken me a year and a half to curate, I, uh, it's hard. That's hard. That's hard work and hard investment of my time. That's hard to, to share. Um, so I've never, you know, you know, attempted to do one on my own. Um, 
I had moved, I said kind of, I moved away from buy-in groups and um, focus more on buying wholesale from companies and um, that I can, can, because what I want to be able to do is if I, if I, if I have an item that I sell, I want to continually be able to sell it. When I was getting things from buying groups, you know, I might have bought 10 and then I would have people that wanted them, but then I couldn't get any more or that they, you know, weren't running another buy-in for that for a while. Um, so I wanted to have consistency in what I sold. I found that to be even more important than, um, you know, just having lots of things. It's the consistency of items. So, you know, if, if I'm going to sell a, you know, seersucker duffel bag, I want to make sure I always have those available and I'm not just buying them, you know, a couple of times here and there with buying groups. So I've kind of changed, you know, my practice on that and, and work more with wholesale companies. Okay, let's see. So where and how do you store all your supplies? How do you store all your finished products that you plan to sell? Um, so finished products, nothing's finished. I don't embroider it unless you buy it. Um, so I don't do items just to sit around. Everything I do is custom. Um, how do I store it? Um, that's the wrong way. Nope, that's the wrong way. <laughs> So like over here, I've got all these bins. Um, I do all of my shirts up here. Um, so in different, I can't get off my seat. Um, so like I have my, um, and they're empty because I'm so low on stock, like baby gowns, um, short, long sleeve boys. Um, these are infant gowns. This is um, short sleeve and long sleeve of cap sleeve shirts. And this is short and long sleeve of ruffle shirts. And then there's actually three more rows on the bottom that have different supplies in them that I sell. Um, I also back here, oh, you're seeing my light. Oh, I can't show you. I've got um, some shelving that I, I put other things on there. It has like all my, um, you know, napkins and pillows and um, sweaters, things like that that I sell. Um, so I, I keep them all in here. Um, I used to have a ton of inventory and um, I learned that wasn't, you know, the best. I used to buy stuff. Here's another lesson that I learned along the way. I used to buy a lot of stuff from these stash groups. And I would see like, oh my gosh, she's selling these um, quatrefoil diaper bags and I can get them for like $3 a piece. I'm going to buy all of them. Send them all to me. Here's my PayPal. And I quickly learned, well, you know what? She couldn't yet sell them for a reason. <laughs> She's getting rid of them this cheap because she couldn't sell them. No wonder I can't sell them. Like, I learned quickly that if people are de-stashing things, there's a reason they're de-stashing it. It's not a selling item for them. Um, so I, it's just not something that I do. Um, but so, yeah, I don't have items that are that I'm planning. If you just mean my just blanks, then I do have, you know, three different racks over there and then all that storage on this side. So um, that's worked. Uh, my brother's like the thread art thread. I've not used that. So maybe that's a good one to try. Uh oh, I clicked on something. Have you ever used the heat transfer vinyl from a Cricut or that you can buy at Michael's? So I don't use that. I use glitter. Marine vinyl. Glitter. Marine. No. I have a whole video on it. I can't remember what it's called. My glitter vinyl. Um, it's, it's, it's vinyl made for embroidery. So it's not made for the heat press. Uh, it's specific to embroidery, and it is amazing. And look at this stuff. I have a whole video on it if you really want to, like, dig deeper into what this is. But this is made specifically for um, embroidery. Um, it does not have sparkly. It does not um, have any kind of sticky backing to it or any adhesive. It's uh, it's amazing, though. I mean, this this stuff is to die for and it comes in like 21 different colors it's really thin you can cut it easily just like fabric with, when you're doing appliques and it just really you know has a huge pop to anything that you do and it comes in just so many fun colors so i love that um thank y'all for saying hi to thomas i'll tell him um my machines have their own mind but it's always good to try what's good for your machine yes try try things like i mean you it might work for you and it doesn't work for somebody else so um, the label came up on a mine. I bought a whole drawer full before I got the right one. I hate pink. I mean, okay, no way. I said I love pink, but oh my goodness, when I'm trying to, I hate matching. I hate when somebody will drop something off and ask me to match a color. 
it's they don't realize how almost impossible it was or is, um, you know, and they'll, if they dare ask me, if, if I hear that quickly come out of their mouth, uh, well, what color would you suggest? I can guarantee you I ain't suggesting a matching color. I'm going to say, oh, gosh, I think that teal would really pop on that. Uh, and and I'm, I'm not lying, but I'm certainly not going to say a matching color because it can be impossible. And I do not have time to be running to the store and taking your item and holding it up against all the thread. Like, ain't going to do it. I did get um, from Floriani. Um, where is it? I did end up getting their thread color chart. Um, here it is. And this helps especially if I like consistently am doing something and I don't think the color matches well, they um, sell these and, and each, each different company sells these as well. Isocord has one too, but I mean, this has actual thread on it and it has every single one on there. And so if, if I am you know, creating something myself and it's a new product, then I can come over here and say, well, you know what? This color actually looks way better. Maybe that's the one I should use. Uh, and I, you know, put that in with my next order. Um, if it's not already part of my 64 um, top colors. Um, I haven't tried any of those, but those are neat too. The, is it, what are they called? Variegated. Then there's metallic thread, stuff like that. So, um, you know, this is a good way to, to check out new colors. I'm certainly not going to have all these colors on hand. Okay. Um, um have you done a tour of your studio? So I have with my previous, but I had moved and I have not done it here. Um, I had, let's see, I would say like a couple of lives ago, I just did a work with me and pretty much for the whole hour, I couldn't find anything. I was so frustrated. I couldn't find a darn anything in this room. And so I literally cut my lives short. <laughs> I was like, you guys, I am really recognizing the fact that I am not as organized as I wish I was. And I spent the next two days literally reorganizing everything. And I feel so much better. Um, I already spoke about Amber, who showed me in one of her lives what she uses. And I am so giddy about these. Um, I got these after she told me what, the, you know, where she got them from. Mm. So this is how I've organized all my files, or my files. This is how I organized all my orders now. Um, mm. I got a lot that I'm waiting on around me. Um, but what I do is I put the, um, the Etsy order in the pocket. Can't see it, but that's okay. And in the back, I put the blank. So if I have it in stock, I'll go ahead and put it in there. That way I can grab it. I know what I need to make. These are going to be a game changer. I am so tickled to have them. Um, and I just, I have them all in here um, in order of when they're due to go out. So that huge, huge new organizational addition to my room. I'm always looking for ways to be more efficient. And then is absolutely going to help me in the end. So I am so appreciative of learning where she got those. They're from Amazon. Um, hello from Denver. I'm a surgical tech and wanting to quit and go full time with my business. I've heard you say you make a lot more than you did nursing. I'm just unsure when to give it a go. So start while you're still working and just kind of dip your feet into it and see. I certainly wouldn't quit <laughs> and start. Uh, I certainly didn't do it that way. Um, I was working full time. It really wasn't. It, I want, I want, honestly, I started because I wanted to go to lunch with my friends. I started because I wanted to have money in my back pocket. I wanted, I started just to have a little bit of, of, you know, money to go, not waste, but, you know, just have fun with, fun money. And that's why I started. I didn't start with the intentions of knowing it was going to get to where it is today. And I think that helped because I didn't put all the stress that I know some people put in the beginning on my business my business grew very organically. And so that kind of really helped. Um, so, you know, start like I did. I started just selling to people at work and, and in Facebook groups and, you know, locally and just see how it goes. See if there is a market for what you do and what you sell and, you know, kind of work towards it that way. And, you know, I would stay up. So when I was a nurse, I was, I stay up late at night. It's just my time. It's the time that I can, you know, have to myself to work in my room. And I get a lot done that way. And I, I knew in my mind that I could not go to a day of nursing if I had, didn't have five hours of sleep. So I would literally stay up to, and I'd be looking at that clock. I'm like, okay, I got to go to bed. I got to have five hours so I can go work my 12 hour shift. Um, so, I mean, I was working crazy in the beginning, but I loved it. I enjoyed it. And here we are today. Okay. How behind are we? Um,
you learn the hard way to not use sticky stabilizers on clothing and towels. Your towels, whoop, yep, don't use it on that. Definitely don't do that on that. How do you decide on what to charge for different items? Um, good question, Melba. So honestly, you know, go on Etsy, see what other people are charging, see what is the go-to. You know, what I told you in the beginning is, I, or when I first started, I was I sold these two first items for like nothing. And no wonder I sold so many because people are like, oh my gosh, these generally are like $35 and she's selling them for 18. Uh, it, it's not, you know, what you want to do in the end because it was so much work for such zero profit. Um, you want to make sure you're, you're, you know, giving yourself money. You don't want to outprice yourself, but you don't want to underprice yourself and literally being working your tail off and having nothing to show for it. So really just kind of look around and see what the market um, is for these items and, and, and go a few dollars above that. It's funny. I, 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 I always say, I don't ever go with the lowest and I don't ever go with the highest. Uh, when I can't get a chair, I'm not getting down again, y'all. Um, when we when we bought this house, I wanted to have it cleaned really good, um, get, you know, whoever lived in the germs out and whatnot. And so I, you know, got a quote for like, you know, $600. I mean, but we were talking about deep clean, like intense, deep clean, top to bottom, inside drawers, inside refrigerator, inside oven, inside every cabinet in every single bathroom, inside the tub, like deep clean. So I got a, got a quote for like $600, right? I knew that was too much. I knew I could do better than that. So kept calling around. Um, one person, you know, said like 350. That was that was good, actually. I called this other <laughs> number. And first off, she didn't answer very professionally, even though it was listed as a business. And that, but that's OK. Right. You can, you can be off at times. Um, but she when she realized I was asking her a business question, she kind of changed her tone a little bit. And she told me, Oh, from top to bottom, $80. And so I just said, thank you very much. And I got off the phone. I knew based on her price of $80, that was so not in even the ballpark of what anybody else was saying it was, you know, that it cost. I knew immediately that I did not want this person to come. And yes, would it have been a lot less? But am I getting what I paid for? Probably. So don't ever be the lowest price. It doesn't, it doesn't do a good thing for our field either. If someone is selling the exact same item and selling it for half the price of someone else's. So um, we've got to all support each other and make sure that we're not underselling all of us. Okay, let's see. Um, I just bought an SC1900. What complete supplies do I need? So, Chris, I talked about embroideryaid.com. I have listed on there what I consider the essential supplies. And um, I'm actually curating a box that um, I will be selling soon. And it will have all the supplies to get you started, you know, talking about stabilizers and whatnot. But all those items are actually listed where you can go and look right now. You can't actually buy it yet. Um, but at least you could see um, what's out there and what I suggest. Uh, what are those loop things called again? It's called a snag nabbit. I don't know if someone might have already answered that, but snag nabbit. So snag, S-N-A-G, nab, N-A-D, it, snag nabbit. Oop, I dropped it. I don't want to lose it, but it's magnetic, so that's nice. Um, yeah, you definitely want that. I know, Olivia, I didn't know they existed either. She said a snag grab it, and it's a snag nabbit. Not grab it, snag nabbit. Um, Dawn says magnetic bobbins help with loops. I'm just going to snag nab it. Yep. $5. See, it's more than it. It shouldn't be $5. It's a little tiny piece of nothing. Um, I have not used magnetic bobbins. I just buy them off Amazon. Here, we'll go over here. No, over here. No, I'm just going to drink. It'll be all right. Oh, it's still cold. An hour and a half later, it's still cold. Um, how do you store your designs? Do you keep them zipped until you need them or store them unzipped? What do you use for backup of designs? Well, I had a really unfortunate experience where my computer crashed. You never think it's going to happen to you, but it did. It happened to me. Um, I had stored them on Dropbox, but I'm having a really hard time or just not remembering to upload my new things. Um, but man, you guys, I was so lucky. You know, my computer wouldn't turn on. It was dead. Uh, I use them till they die. I guess that's not good. I use them hard. I don't probably use them the right way. My husband says I don't turn them off like I should. And so it's probably my fault, but whatever. Um, the Geek Squad at Best Buy, holy Hannah. They were able to take that thing 
and retrieve my files and save my embroidery life. Um, and so from th that point on, I knew um, I needed to have an external hard drive. And so that's where I actually store everything. Uh, it's, it's only there. And I have two versions of it uh, so that I have a backup to my backup uh, because I'm scared that what if I have something to my backup? Um, I was able to go to a lot of the different sites if I, if, it, if I couldn't, if it didn't, you know, come over and, and re-download them. And it was scary, though, to have lost it. Um, so I highly recommend you having an external hard drive. Um, and that's where I store everything. I um, download it zipped, but then I unzip it right away. Normally, if I'm buying it, it's because I'm using it right then and there. I try not to buy mass um, quantities of designs unless I have a reason to use them. In the beginning, I did. Like a digitizer would be having a sale, and, you know, they would be like, buy three, get 95 free. And so I'm like, yeah, <laughs> let me go buy 100 new designs. And I would spend an hour picking out which 93 free designs I was going to get. And then those 93 designs are sitting somewhere and I've never stitched them or I bought an entire designer when they were going out of business, pick, pick and stitch paid 50 bucks and got every design that she had ever, you know, done. And now granted it was a good deal, but do I use half of those? Do I use a fourth of those? Do I use a eighth of those? Do I use a 12th of those? No. Um, and so I learned after that that I, I only get it if I need it, um, even though there's some really cute ones. And I hope one day that I might have a reason for it. Uh, I really limit just buying um, unless I'm using it right then and there. I know, KP, this is like a giant baby bottle. It's... Again, it makes me want to throw up watching people drink. And here I am doing it for y'all. Um do you think it's okay to do your sample and felt and take photos instead of blings? I think it's great that people do that, but can I tell in every picture that it's made on felt? Yeah. I don't like felt. So no, I don't think it's okay. I'm just kidding. It's fine. Um, I don't want to like people to get mad. I'm trying to see where the, where I have. Um, so what I did, if I don't do anymore, now I, um, I do samples in my group. And I'll post new things. Um, and if I have a new design, I'll say, does anyone want this sample sale you know, for $20? And it pays for the design. It also pays for the shirt. Um, and then I can take great pictures of it. So that's worked better for me. But if there is something you needed to try, I, I, I went to Joann's and just bought like fabric that feels just like a t-shirt. And it looks just like a t-shirt. Um, I think it's best to stitch it on something just like what you're going to stitch it on so that it, it, it keeps the same quality. Um, so I recommend buying a fabric that is just like a t-shirt, cut it into squares and, and doing it on that. I have some samples that I did like that in the beginning, but, um, I don't generally do that as much now. I do it more, um, you know, if I get, you know, a new line or, you know, say, you know, love that cotton this year added pink corduroy to their dress line. And so I just put up in my group, um, that I would do, um, uh, 25% off for a sample sale. And that way I bought the size they needed, monogrammed what they needed, got paid for it. it. It covered the cost of the blank and in my time. And I didn't have to have a sample that, you know, this actually went somewhere and I took the quality pictures of it. So it was a win-win for them and for me. Um, so that's how I do samples. I, I make sure, um, you know, that, that someone wants it and will pay for, you know, a fraction of the cost to have it done. So that works better for me. Now, if you're just starting and you don't have a group that you can kind of bounce ideas off of like that, then yeah, I would just recommend getting the um, fabric that is just like t-shirt. And I don't even know what it's called. I'm sure somebody does, but um, I think that looks better than felt. Um, just my opinion. I think I'm too old for Discord. My phone would not stop dinging. I cannot stop the notification, so I removed it. So you can actually change the notifications to only get notified if someone actually um, mentions your name specifically. So that's what I would suggest doing. Um, yeah, I, it's funny. So my son has uh, got a hoverboard for Christmas and it's a Bluetooth hoverboard. So we were on a walk the other day and he asked if he could um, have my phone <laughs> to have the Bluetooth music go through it. And so I gave it to him and we're walking <laughs> and we kept hearing that discord. Bloop, 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 bloop. And they they were like, mom, is that discord? I'm like, oh, you know about discord? They're like, um, yeah. 
So anyway, I didn't know it was even a thing. And I guess people use it for a lot, but you're not too old, Olivia, but that would be annoying. Um, labels is what I started with. I use a Rolo and it's game changer. So Alicia, yeah, I've heard people um, have had issues with their Dymos. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Is it Dynamo or Dymo? And have really suggested the Rolo. Like mine's worked great since I've had it. I've not had any issues with it. So I'm just going to keep it um, until, until it starts giving me issues. Um, a lot, looks like a lot of other people say same thing. Um, loves her Laura's lace fabrics. Um, loves her Dymo. Um, Thermo printers are also weatherproof. Good point. Yes. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, if they get wet, it's not gonna um, run. Um, Jenny has a Rolo. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Um, KP says I agree on the ink issue running low. Yeah, it's that was so annoying. Um, polyester melts. Um, yeah, there's something about polyester melt. One of them, you can throw a bleach on and it won't you know, change it. So Deborah, you have two Etsy shops. Well, well tell us what you do if you're still on. Um, what are your two shops? Um, what, what, how different are the items that you sell in them and, and, you know, how you came up with that? Anna, so she has a Dymo. Lakeisha has a Rolo, Game Changer. Um, Dawn says, you say you don't have a heat press, just do it. I use mine on everything. I even use mine on my shorts when I needed to press it. Well, that see, Dawn, thank you for giving me permission to buy my pink heat press. What would you suggest with size that I should start with? Like the pink one I saw, I think was a 12 by 15. And I was like, oh, I don't want to get it. And then wish I had gotten one bigger. So let me know what you think, um, what any of y'all suggest as a good starter size. Um, I'm an RN also, and a nurse aide can make or break your shift. A good nurse aide is, I mean, right? I mean, absolutely make or break. Absolutely make or break. They can, they just do. Um, thank you for what you do, Lisa. You can use embroidery thread for surgery, but it won't be strong. As we use those more for decorative. See, good. Thank you for answering that for embroidery thread is too expensive to use in a surgery. There you go. I order maxi lock from Whoa. I don't know what that is, but that's pretty cool. Um, let's see. I keep clicking on the wrong darn thing. Um, Polly versus Rayon. We need to do a video on that, right? Um, how is it to sew a sequence fabric on your embroidery machine? Do you need a special needle? I have said before, I use the same needle for everything that I do. When I mean the same needle, I mean the same needle. I mean the same needle. It's an 8012 uh, micro tech, micro tech, micro. It's the sharp needle, micro tech, universal needle, 8012. I use it for everything. I didn't need to change it. I don't change for anything. Um, and. Um, anyway, I have a video on it. You can watch uh, it, they, some of the sequins sometimes pop and, and go, but it, 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 it does beautiful. I love it. I would use a sat satin stitch, though, when you do it. You need that to keep it in place. Frank, I don't know what you're talking about. He knows he has tiny mushrooms growing in between his toes, and it's Sunday. Should I go to the emergency room anyway? Are you just saying that because I'm a nurse? Silly. Um, so you have a supplier you like for certain items and love the Good Life Warrior. I may just go full retail instead, but I love the idea of a buy-in. Yeah. So no, if you already have a supplier, then go for it. You would be amazing. And please let me know what your group is and I will join and I will buy from you. Um, and yes, the Good Life Warrior. I mean, she knows. I mean, if, if you are interested in Alibaba, then you need to go to her and watch her videos. She has amazing videos where she really breaks down like just it's amazing what she is able to, you know, teach you on, you know, the proper way to buy. Um, I'll try to, you know, go through a buy that I'm getting soon um, and just show you how I've broken down her rules to, to pick who I'm getting it from. Uh, is it glitter, uh, glitter vinyl? Yeah. Embroidery glitter vinyl from, and it's, yeah, from Mickery World. That's where I get it. Um, what local company in North Carolina to buy your blank products or a good company for kids shirts. So AJ blanks, um, has great blanks, blanks boutique, ARB blanks. None of these are local to North Carolina, but all great places and love that cotton. Where do you buy your Floriani thread? I get it from redrockthreads.com. Red rock threads. Oh, night shift. I hear you. I've done that. Thank you for popping in Mary. Um, let's see. 
Ann says, I was wondering what monogram fonts you recommend. Um, find good digitizers that you enjoy and that you like their style. Uh, there's lots that I could recommend. Apex Embroidery, Schuler Studios, Itch to Stitch, Creative Applique, uh, Embroidery Boutique. Um, I know I'm missing some of my favorites. Um, Applique Alley, Alphalicious. Um, Y'all throw out ones that you love, but um, those are some of my go-tos. Um, I, I had this up earlier. Uh, you know, these are some of my go-tos. These are the ones that I kind of narrow it down. Do I have a lot more? Yes. But are these the ones that I feel like are good options for, um, you know, the folks that I sell to? Um, so there's a start. Um, just place an embroidery vinyl order at stalls. Oh, okay. Well, good. So yeah, you might have to use different suppliers in Canada. I'm not exactly sure about who ships where. Um, yes, Alicia, I can't put anything on my computer. It's full. It's full to the max. I've had, um, um, my, my, my buddies over at the geek squad, try to help me learn how not to use up so much storage. I, I feel like I put everything on my hard drive. You know, I don't put any of these videos. I don't put any, um, of my designs on there anymore. So I don't know. I don't even know what I do. I, I feel like I'm so techie and then I'm not at all. Jersey knit fabric. Thank you, J.E. Yeah. Jersey knit fabric. That's what this is. I don't know my fabrics unless you're talking about sear slacker. Um, but it is soft. Uh, I also use this for the backing when I'm doing my faux smock. So that's what I use it more for now. Um, interlock knit. Maybe that's what it's called. I don't know. Yes, it has been used by gamers. That's what my boys told me. Uh, and I, I'm thinking that little emblem. Is it is it supposed to be a, 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 a controller? Probably. I don't know. But it's fun. Um, crochet hats and now embroider. So you have two different shops for that. I think that was the, the question that we were asking you. Um, so yeah, I can see how those could be d different um, target markets. So that would be good. All right, Alicia said a 15, but okay. So maybe the 12 by 15 pink one that I saw, I think I might be disappointed with that. So 15 by 15, I'll have to look into that. I found a pink one. Jersey fabric is like a t-shirt material. Perfect. So that's what I recommend um, doing samples on versus felt. Just me. Uh, bigger and clam style. Okay. Uh, I have read about the clam. I've read about the pullout drawer. Um, I can't remember what clam meant. Clam. I'll look into it. Thank you, Dawn. Uh, Alicia said nothing smaller than 50 foot. Okay. So I, I will not get that 12 by 15 pink one that I think I saved. Um, Jenny said the same thing. 15 by 15 heat press is a good size. Or if you're thinking about adult size shirts, it's probably 16 by 20. It's getting big. It's getting big. I do want one. I don't, I just want one. Um, Heat Press Nation has really good ones. I got my 1515 pullout drawer and love it. By the way, they have a cute, well, Jenny, I'm gonna have to look that up. Heat Press Nation, pink by pink, 15 by 15. I will look that one up. Um, Dawn had to turn off notifications. My phone was going off all the time, even late at night. Now I check for new messages. Yeah. Um, bye, Anna. I think I'm catching up with the comments. I think I did. Um, when you make a mistake on a shirt, don't throw it away. Cut the back off to use your samples. Good idea, Dawn. Very good idea. Very good idea. Y'all, I've caught up. It's only an hour and 52 minutes in. And I caught up with all the comments. Y'all are awesome. Thank y'all for asking me so many great questions. Um, I do want to go back real quick and hit on a couple of these questions that people specifically wanted me to go over tonight. Bet they're not on here anymore. Um, but if they watch it on a replay, then they'll know that I did read their question and, and talked about it. Um, Food Baby said, when, you, when to form an LLC and do you charge tax on items outside of North Carolina? Um, so I did do an LLC um, because I, I was able to open up a um, business account, which I felt was very important for doing wholesale. And um, for me, that was really important. So LLC, for those that aren't as um, savvy in that, and I wasn't until I started, uh, it's a limited liability company. It's a type of business structure that lets you classify your businesses as a separate entity from you personally. So it allows you to keep your personal assets separate from your business assets and protect them from your business debts and liabilities. So, you know, if I was to, you know, it doesn't really happen much in our field or much or really ever, it, you know, someone was to sue me for an item that I gave them. Well, my house and my, my family's money would not be, um, you know, touched on that. This is a, you know, business and, um, and some bigger wholesale accounts that 
that um, I have applied for, you know, do want you to be more than just a um, sole entrepreneur. They, the, the LLC is important to them. Uh, it allows you to open up the bank accounts. Like I said, I was able to get a business account with that um, and, and other, you know, permits and licenses that you might need. So um, I think that's important to have. Do you have to have it? No. Um, do I feel fancy schmancy and like a big time business? Cause I'm an embroidery nurse comma LLC. Yes. Um, when you use sticky stabilizer on a shirt, do you remove it all before adding the cloud cover? I don't use sticky stabilizers on shirts, but if you were talking about the baby gowns that I mentioned earlier, um, yes, I get every last bit of it off before I would put the tender touch or cloud cover um, on the back. I, I definitely remove it all. Um, Amanda, Amanda, I think she was on earlier. She might not be here anyway, anywhere, but how to find a good vendor on blanks. Um, I think she's been buying from Walmart. And, um, so I did mention, um, AJ blanks. I mentioned blanks boutique. I mentioned ARB blanks. Those are all great ones for shirts. Um, and then jiffy.com when you're looking for adults. Um, let's see. Johanna Holmes asked, she said she officially retired she loves embroidery and hopes to learn how to open an Etsy shop in the next 60 days. So yeah, dive in. I, you know, I say go for it, Johanna, Johanna. Um, I do have a video on um, my recommendations, top 10 things for starting an Etsy embroidery business. So certainly check that out. And that might give you some good things to work on in the beginning. Um, let's see. Um, Anime Pro One asked, how do you like the Recoma? And I, I, someone else asked me that earlier, certainly using it um, a lot and incorporating it into my business. It's definitely you know, adding to my productivity. Uh, there was a learning curve, but I felt like they have really good um, assistance that they can really help you, you know, work through it even after the fact of starting it. So that's been really helpful. Um, I've been able to do some things on it that I would never have been able to do on my other two machines because um, they are smaller. The the embroidery field on the Rakoma is like no other. So that's amazing. And it really, really kind of opens up my shop to be able to do, uh, you know, bigger and better things. So I really do like it. Um, let's see. CMA says, do you embroider hats? So I, I did get these out for you guys. So yes and no. Yes. I have all supplies. No, I haven't done it yet. So this comes with the Bracoma machine. It actually comes on it, a, a hat that they have already, you know, stitched and, and it's amazing. And it's that 3D puff embroidery. Um, so I know that the machine is literally made for hats. It, it not made, but you know what I mean? Uh, it's one of the huge, you know, additions to this machine. Um, it, it comes with all the cap drivers. You don't have to buy them extra. They come with the machine. So I think that's pretty darn amazing. And so I went and bought all these fun hats and I can't wait. Uh, and I already have people in my group that are willing to, like I said, at a 25% discount, be my samples. Um, so these are some that I bought. I think they're fun. Um, they're kind of like a little torn, a little bit um, rustic. Rustic's not the word. Vintage, that's the word. And then how cute is this camo hat? And it's one that has the ponytail holder. See that little or space for the ponytail. Look at that cute camo hat. How cute is that gonna be with like a pink monogram on it? I'm not even a camo girl, but I just think it's cute. Uh, I like this one. I gave all my boys a hat in their stocking and told them that I would embroider something on it. Not really sure what I'm embroider for my boys, but we were thinking, you know, do like T1, T2, T3. All my boys have T names. So just like do it on the side. But this one's for me, the pink one. These are cute little trucker hats. <laughs> and then look at this one. This one also has the um, the hole in the back for the ponytail. Um, but seriously, look at that. How fun is that going to be monogrammed? I mean, hey, 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 is it crooked? I mean, cuteness. Um, and then this one is um, one of my boys picked. I let them all pick the color they wanted. This one's like neon green. So I'm definitely going to learn, um, watch some more videos and um, just try to figure it out because I would love to include that. I mean, I think some of these are going to be such cute like gift items and summertime. I want to do some, you know, visors, but I just think these are fun. I love the different colors, um, you know, like do like gold monogram, whatnot on it will just look super cute. So I don't do them yet. My machines certainly have the ability to do it. I also bought a derky hat hoop for my um, baby locks probably a year and a half ago, two years ago, and I've yet to use it. 
um, but I would like to. I'd like to try that as well. So um, I'll try to do them both and post a video soon. Um, like that camo hat, right? Like I'm not even a not even a camo person, but how cute would that be? Like, I mean, I, yeah. It has to look crooked on me. And look, I don't know. It looks like a looks like a zombie got it or a dinosaur. I don't know. I think that's funny. I like zombies. I like The Walking Dead. A little random tidbit. Oh, you like the vintage. I like the vintage too. Um, I like the fact that it just looks, you know, worn a little bit. Um, they're gonna be fun. So hopefully I'll have a video up for you guys soon of me really actually doing it. The pink and gray. Isn't that cute? So like I said, all my boys picked one and I was like, well, I have to have one too. So I'm gonna do pink and gray. Now, am I going to match that pink in the back? Probably not. Because uh, you, you heard me, I don't like pink, matching pink. I love pink, but um, so, of course, I had to get um, pink for myself. Lisa has a dirty hat hoop. Good. I have it, too. Where is it? Where are you, dirty hat hoop? Where are you? Here's the Look at this. Guess what's never come out of it? Like, I'm literally never taking it out of the bag. So, we'll learn how to use this. Because I would like to try it on all of them. But I think my Rakoma is going to like trump this 10 times over because like I said, it came with the hat drivers and hat things. And so um, maybe I'll try it. I'll try it. I bought it. It's one of those things that I bought, never used. It should, I should go put it in that bin over there of all those things that I bought and never used. <sighs> um, mm, the Walking Dead. Seriously, I love I like The Walking Dead. I like Schitt's Creek and I like random, really, really random reality TV shows, you know, like, like quarters. Oh my gosh. I love quarters. I love it. it. Makes me feel so clean and neat. Um, you like leopard hat. I love leopard hat. I really do. That one, like in my group, when I, when I said, I need some sample sales, who wants to try one of these for me? Everybody was like, I want that. So I'm pretty sure that'll be a good one. You look good in hats. Look, well, because I got a big forehead. I think that's the issue. I can cover it up with a hat. Where did I get the hats from? Buck Wholesale. It was quick, easy um, ordering. I thought they had some good choices. They didn't have everything maybe um, that I was looking for, but um, but I like what I got. So I'll try them. We'll see if, um, if they work um, or, or if I can figure out how to work them. Good Debbie has a dirty hat hoop and she uses it often. That's awesome. Distress hats are all over Junk Gypsy. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to look it up. Junk Gypsy shop. Distressed hats. Well, I'm going to check it out. I have a dirty hat hoop too. Need to try it. See, you haven't tried it either. See, I have the hat hoop for my brother, Pierre, but I haven't had the courage to try it. I know me either. Um, I, I, let's do it. Heather, we're going to do it. I give you now 30 days, 30 days, Heather. We're going to meet back 30 days, Heather Jackson and write your name down. We're going to try it. We have what we need to do it. Heather, Heather Jackson in 30 days, you and I are going to come back on in a month. And I'm going to ask you if you're on here, whether you tried your hat hoop. I'm challenging you 30 days. We got it. Uh, Shit's Creek is the best. I get from Buck Wholesale too. Okay, good. Um, Shit's Creek. Oh my god! Like I literally cried when it was over. Like I just felt like my people were gone. Oh, I cried. And you know, it, it was like halfway through all the seasons that I realized that the dad and son are really dad and son, and that the bartender or the, the diner is their sister. Like, how did I not know that when I started the show? Like, seriously, I did think they matched well together. I was like, oh, they really go together. Um, I had no clue they were the ones that produced the show. And when I watched that finale of it, when they, you know, where they were all on it, they were all crying. It just, uh, I just loved everything about that show. I mean, talk about a show that could just get you in out of the real world and just in the funniest, just, uh, oh my gosh, I, I, I just miss it. Like, I, I don't watch shows over, but I'm, I, I could watch that again. Oh my gosh, I could watch that again. Um, I'm going to purchase that hat hoop. Dolly, are you getting the jerky one? Um, supposedly, it's a really good one to have. Um, 
this one, so you do have to make sure it's specific for your machine. So this one on the front says baby lock and brother six and 10 needle machine cap frame, um, jerky cap frames. Um, so we'll try it, we'll try it. Um, another Shits Creek and can be a Texas shop in Waco and cool girly stuff. Oh, fun. Well, I have to look. Embroidery Nurse Challenge. Let's try it, Jenny. Uh, is that for Heather? Heather says, give it a try. Okay, we're going to meet back. I said I'm doing this every two weeks. So in two shows, two shows, is this a show? This isn't a show. Um, two times from now, we'll check back. You have watched every season twice. Yeah, or, or, yeah, I need to. Do it, Heather. Do it. This says do it, Heather. Um, does your margarita taste better than my wine? Yes, because it's still cold. And y'all, we've been talking for two hours. And again, I don't like to, I don't like to drink. I don't like to watch people drink. There, I just drink a lot. It's good. Okay. Um, I mean, seriously, Alicia. I mean, like, I was bawling. <laughs> I couldn't really explain it to my husband. I'm like, it's the show, and it just is dumb, but it's so dumb that it's so good, and it just makes me laugh, and I just love David, and I just want to, I want to live there, and oh my goodness, I just, I mean, I could tear up now, I just, I love them, and, and it's like when I read a good book, and I'm so sad that there's not a sequel, um, I'm sad, I'm sad, but anyway, okay, last couple of questions, and then I gotta go, um, Let's see. Do, 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 do. What was it? I just want to make sure I got the ones that actually asked me prior to coming on. Um, oh, Lisette's Craft Corner asked embroidering on spandex and athletic wear. Um, that's honestly, I don't, I don't. That's, if there is one material that I just don't want to do that, um, I need to practice some more. So if I'm gonna really do the challenge of 101 things to embroider on, I need to figure this one out. I did um, some band bandeau. Is that how you say it? Bandeau uh, bathing suit tops. And I absolutely hated doing them. I hated how they looked. Um, and so, you know, you can pick and choose what you do. And I just chose not to do those anymore. Uh, hopefully somebody's got a good suggestion. Maybe we can look up a video that could, you know, teach us better and, you know, me as well. Um, but mm, I don't do those well. Um, Christy Mead. Um, this is the last one because everybody else, I feel like the question um, was asked again. So last question, Christy Mead says, she gets questions in her Etsy shop from customers. Uh, are they gonna get their item in a week? How do you handle these types of issues? Um, and she was specifically talking, it was a lot longer. That's just all I wrote down. She was specifically talking about um, with all the shipping delays right now. And I have had to um, you know, refund a few people that it just got ridiculous. I had literally had, this dress from ARB, but, and it's not their fault. I know it's not their fault at all. So I'm not calling them out by any means. They have great customer service. They do a great job. But I believe there's a distribution center near them that is suffering tremendously during the pandemic. That um, it, it must be a site that um, has been hit hard with COVID cases or closed down or you know rerouting. But um, I had something that was ordered on December 21st, and it arrived to me yesterday well that poor person they waited they were they were patient and then it just got to the point where all right like now this lady's like uh -uh, i don't i don't trust her uh and i want to be like go look at my reviews i promise like you know people are like oh she shipped this out, shipped this out so fast um and you know when it comes to all those cute little dresses i can't keep every one of those sizes and colors in stock i can't do it not gonna do it um so i do you know order those as needed so what i'm having to do right now is literally i you know every day i'm putting orders in to blanks boutique to arb i mean just to wherever that you know i need particular items from where i used to do it once weekly now i'm having to do it all the time and just hope that things will get here um so i've lost money on a couple of orders i just felt like it was the right thing to do to um refund them i don't do it automatically like it has to be a significant delay um, before I'm going to refund somebody. Because if I put the money out after you've ordered it, then I really want to get you that item. And more than likely, they want the item too. Um, unless it's like a birthday item. Uh, and now I do try to keep my shirts in stock so people aren't having to wait for, um, you know, birthday shirts. But those are more time sensitive. So it's hard. I'm just just being really honest with, with um, customers. And I've really not gotten any pushback from anybody. 
Um, when, when I've you know made those decisions to refund somebody, it was because we've we'd had a you know ongoing communication, and you know enough was enough on their end. And I get it. I mean, I, I get it. And I'll be able to you know hopefully use those either in a sample sale or whatnot in my group uh, and and reclaim that. Um, so. I don't worry about it too much. And, you know, when your volume gets a little bit higher, you know, certain things like that, you can kind of brush under the rug and just consider it a business expense and, and just something that's, you know, going on right now and out of our control. So I just try to be very upfront and honest and, and communicate. Um, you know, when I have refunded somebody, it might've been because I wasn't very quick to communicate or, or I thought I had, you know, messaged them and let them know maybe I hadn't. Um, but if I keep communication going back and forth, then generally it, it works out for everybody in the end. Um, let's see. Just a couple more before we go. So you love the hat, especially the one with the ponytail. I bought the hat hoop to my baby. Well, okay. All right. I'm adding you. You're going to try it. You, you own it and you haven't done it yet. So you, me, and Heather, I'm writing it down, Miss Social Deb. Game on. We are trying our hat hoops within the next 30 days. Challenge, challenge you now. Heather's accepted the challenge, so you need to accept it too, okay? Um, and Mary wants to do the challenge too. You, I mean, yeah, the, the hat hoop, I mean, you swoosh it down pretty darn flat. But I mean, this one is for, uh, um, this one is for my six needle, but at least look into it. That's your challenge. Look into it and see if it's possible in the machine that you have. Um, I have the PR670E and one a hat hoop, but don't know exactly what I need. Um, Ruby, I'm going to give you the challenge of looking up your machine specifically, um, looking at the different hat hoops. A lot of them have drop down menus and you can pick from that based on the machine you have and it will let you know uh, what's available for your machine. Um, KP says you need to watch the show. I mean, I will tell you Shit's Creek is not for everybody. It just isn't. It is, it is off. It, it just, it is not for everybody, but it was, it was for me. It sounds like it was for Alicia too. Um, Dolly says it fits my brother PRS 100 machine. Good. Can you use, um, can you have another option for shipping on Etsy then? Yes. So a lot of people actually have gone off of Etsy sh shipping. I just do it, it whatever it's worked. Um, most things I have not lost, <laughs> um, that I've shipped out. Um, I've had more issues with items getting to me, um, to embroider, but, um, you can actually use like pirate ship. That's a great place to go to off of Etsy selling, and you can pick different ways to ship it from there. And actually pirate ship integrates with Etsy. They actually can speak to each other. I've not done that yet. Cause I've, I use pirate ship if I'm going to mail something, um, to someone, not on Etsy, like, or say someone pays me through Venmo um, and they want me to ship it to them. Um, and that would be somebody, you know, I know, well, I don't have a PayPal um, shipping address. I don't have the Etsy shipping label. So I do it on pirate ship for that, but I've definitely heard that pirate ship will integrate with Etsy. So that's a good option to use. Um, oh, good. She said um, they make the jerky hat hoop for flatbed machines. Awesome. Um, when did you know it was time to leave your nursing job for Etsy full time? Uh, well, honestly, my nursing job started, I was going, you know, towards management. I was in, um, in, um, what do you call it? What comes after, after college is you get your master's for um, healthcare. And I was doing it in management and um, quickly realized that, I needed to step away from, you know, growing my nursing career, building that and moving up in the hospital setting to being at home with my boys more. They were getting older and doing more activities and needing mommy home more. And my husband started traveling more for work. Um, you know, he was going to places, you know, in other countries and, and things like that. So I needed to be home and not working, you know, um, so exclusively at the hospital and working you know, just high, high, high stress. Um, when I worked, I was in charge of a 50 bed unit and in charge of all 50 rooms, all 13 nurses. Uh, and it was very stressful. And, you know, I didn't have anything left when I would come home and that's not the mom or wife I wanted to be. So I stepped back from the management position and, um, went back to floor nursing. And, um, so really my kids, 
um, were what drove that in my family. Uh, luckily, I had been growing my embroidery business, and so I was able to invest more time in that. So, you know, just keep at it on your side, keep working on it. Um, and, and so, you know, hopefully you'll have it as an ability to fall back on. Um, it, it made it a lot easier to, to make some of the decisions knowing that I had a growing business as well and that I could um, invest more time in that. So I went back to working on the floor and then I went to part time and just worked a couple of days a week. And then I went to casual and that was basically filling in as they needed. And then I decided hospital life is, it was not the life for me anymore. I'd done that for 12 years. So I went to a pediatric office. Um, and then really that was just to keep my foot in the door. Uh, my kids got to go there and, you know, any sick visit with my three kids was included. And I was just working with just a fun group of ladies and, and doctors. And, um, and I was doing that. I was just filling in um, for them, you know, as they needed. I ended up working almost two days a week, though, and, and enjoyed that. Um, and then the pandemic hit and um, they did not could not support the casual staff, you know, for a couple of months. And I, and I just realized that that was my door to um, to working full time with embroidery. Now, embroidery for a while had been my full time job anyway. Um, nursing was just kind of what I did on the side. And I know that seems backwards, but nursing used to be my full time job and this was my side gig. And then um, over a couple of years, nurse, or I was making more money at my embroidery business. So it was my full time gig and nursing was my side. Just get out of the house, be around adults um, and, you know, keep keep my foot in the nursing world. So anyway, things other than my you know, business or what decided my nursing career. But that's that's how amazing nursing is. Um, there's so many options and ways that you can work. Okay, okay, I said that was going to be it. But I'm going to quickly go through the last few. They make the dark hoop for flatbeds. Good. So, all right, you got it. Although Mary says there is not a hoop for the hat for it, but I've done a hat on it. Well, good. That's awesome. You've done it more than I have. Sarah, you said you caught the live. You did. All, we're two hours and 15 minutes in and, and we're almost done, but I'm glad you could pop in and maybe you can watch it afterwards if, if there's some things that you miss. But thanks for coming on. Um, Sandy says she has the hat who never used it. I'm going to use it. Sandy, you're in our challenge. All right, Mary, you're going to research and Sandy already has a hat hoop. Sandy, Diana and Mary Warzak. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, so, Mary, you're going to look for one. And Sandy, Miss Social Deb, and Heather Jackson, we have a 30-day challenge of we're going to use the hoops that we already have for our hats. That's it. We're doing it. All right. Let's see. You're in the challenge. Um, last question coming. I had an order at the 1st of December, shipped very next day priority mail. The customer never reached out to me, just blasted me in my review because it was taking so long. Yeah, that's awful. Now, if it was on Etsy, you can dispute any a review that mentions a third party. So if they mention shipping, postal service, United States Postal Service, anything like that, um, you can dispute that with Etsy for them to remove remove that review. Um, if it, but they're very strict on that um, as far as removing it or not. It depends if it qualifies. But it's worth if it's something that's completely out of your hands. It's worth disputing with Etsy for them to remove that especially if you don't have a lot of reviews on your channel, because that can really hurt in the beginning. Uh, and I hate that people do that. They just don't understand that we're a handmade business. I've actually reached out to a couple of people if they've ever given me a review without contacting me. And just very nicely, very, very nicely, um, just let them know. Oh, I was saw your review. I wish you could have reached out to me. Um, I would have loved to have helped you with this issue. Um, you know, I, I am a... a you know, mom that works from home. Um, and I want to make sure that, you know, you're happy with any product that you buy um, from my shop and Etsy at large. Um, is there anything I can do, you know, to help, you know, help you think differently in regards to this transaction? And anytime I've done that, they, they, they just think that's just so great that I've reached out to them and um, have changed their, you know, review. Um, luckily, Etsy is not really looking at the reviews um, as, critically as they were pre-pandemic. Um, so you've got a little bit more leeway with that, but I do hate that they do that. Sorry, I didn't mean to shake it. How can I send you bonus chat money on YouTube? <laughs> I don't think I have that set up. You don't need to send me any money, Dolly. 
just thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I was director of nursing, have always did crafty stuff on the side, but never to sell. Thinking about Etsy now and I have more time. Yes. See, you know how stressful that is. Um, you say you, I was, so I'm guessing you're not now, Bernadette, but holy Hannah, like it, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it's a stressful job. And I think a lot of nurses, there's so many nurses that have side gigs. I don't know if it's just, you know, working the same part of our brain or, or just we're hands on people or I don't know what it is, or, you know, we just have to get out of what we do and do something fun, you know, when we're not working. Um, I don't know. Um, but yeah, well, thank you for what you have done or are doing presently. Um, and you definitely should look into Etsy for sure. Oh, thanks, Jenny. Y'all don't forget to like my video. And if y'all haven't subscribed, um, it's interesting. I can look at the analytics of my um, videos and I have like 60% people that watch it have not subscribed to the channel. And that's fine. You don't have to subscribe. But if you do, then you will get notifications anytime I post a video or anytime I have a live. Um, and if y'all if y'all enjoy this, if y'all enjoy me, uh, if you find value in the videos that I do, I'd love for y'all to subscribe. Um, it's fun. I've just had fun growing this. Um, it just it tickles me to be able to get on here and chat with you guys and meet people that um, are in the same business and, and whatnot. Um, I have amazing friends, but none of them embroider. They're, they're not in this business, so I can't talk to them too much about that. So um, I'd love for y'all to, to check back in and, and watch other videos and let me know, uh, you know, what I could bring to the table for you. If there's some a specific video that you would like, certainly. Um, if there's a technique you would like, certainly, you know, let me know. Um, I would love for you to check out embroideryaid.com. Again, it's in the beta version, y'all. Y'all were the first to kind of like hear about it in, in these lives. I've mentioned it two weeks ago and I mentioned it tonight and I've not publicized it anywhere yet. I actually have a social media group that's going to help me um, release it out into the world. Um, but y'all look over it. See if there's something you think I should or shouldn't do or if there's a link that does or doesn't work. I would love for you guys to kind of be my crew and look into it with me. Um, but I really do appreciate y'all. And again, love for you to subscribe if this is, if y'all found find value in this and, and just enjoy chatting. Uh, okay, Kim, you said add you to the challenge. I gotcha. I'm putting you down. We're, we're going to learn our hat hoops. Oh, I do like challenges. This will make me do it. So we have six, no, I said 60. We said 30. 30 days. We're going to learn our hat hoops. And good. Um, Miss Social Deb said she accepts the challenge. I mean, we already have them, right? I have two different hat hoops and I haven't done it yet. So our challenge, two, two shows from now, in 30 days, we're going to have it done. And Mary says, if I get the new flatbed I want, I definitely know there's a hat hoop. All right. I, you are part of our challenge now. You're going to get it. Oh, you're retired. Well, good for you, Bernadette. That's awesome. I know you put your time in and I thank you for what you did. Um, I think it's just healthcare in general. I worked in a pharmacy for 13 years and stay stressed. Oh my gosh. Yes. I'm a stay at home mom now. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, so I try not to say that I'm a stay at home mom. I mean, I am, but I have a business. It just happens to be in my home and I can really pick and choose what I do and when I do it. So, um, don't, don't be little what you're doing in your own business. Um, you're not just a stay at home mom. Um, Daisy said, just described. Oh, thanks. You're new to embroidery. Well, welcome. You're going to love it. Good night, good night, good night. Everyone's saying that's awesome. I know I need to go. What time is it? 1130. Um, there's a lot of value information in the video and other videos you posted. Oh, thanks, Jenny. Okay, good. So you're Kim Pleasance. Okay, KP. See, I'm KP too. I'm Kelly Payne. All right. I got you down, don't I? Oh, no, I didn't have you down yet. So KP and we're going to write Kim Pleasance. All right, we are in it. So if you guys are just, if you haven't been paying attention, we are challenging ourselves that we already own hat hoops, but we haven't worked on hats yet. So I'm giving you guys, we've got Kim Pleasance, we've got Kim Martin, we've got Mary Warzak, we've got Sandy Diana, we've got Miss Social Deb and Heather Jackson. We are all in a 30-day challenge to figure out how to use the hat hoops that we already own. Done, 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 done. Thank you guys. I mean, two and a half hours that you guys have been hanging out with me. I just love it. Um, I really enjoyed chatting with you guys tonight. This is so fun. I always worry that no one's going to show up, but you, sh you guys show up big and I appreciate it. And I have fun chatting. I mean, I really feel like we're like in a room together. So thanks for joining me tonight. And like I said, I'm going to do these every two weeks. So every second Sunday at 9 p.m., 9 p.m. just works 
good in my world. Um, and it seems like we get um, a good amount of people popping on at this time too, kind of when we're all winding down and, and different time zones, I guess it's different too. So, uh, but I appreciate y'all being here. Um, I guess that that's it really. Just thank y'all for being here. Good night, everybody. Thanks for popping in. And if you popped on late, you can certainly watch this again. Um, we we kind of went over a bunch and answered lots of questions. So uh, I'm glad y'all were here. Y'all have a good night. Have fun stitching. Hope you have some fun things to do and that you have the um, day off tomorrow. Alicia, you are amazing. Like you can be moderator of all times. I appreciate you coming on and, and just, just talking. So thank you guys. Good night. I'll figure out discord and um, put it down below um, so that we can maybe chat more on there and I'll, I'll figure out how to, to link it a little bit better. So I'll do that right when we get off. So you can check it out um, once this turns into a video on here. All right. Bye guys. Y'all have fun stitching. Whoop, whoop. Margarita time.